Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Gentlemen, yeah. good mm. to see you. Hey. Joe, hey. thanks for having us. Hey. Thank you so my much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thanks for coming to town. Uh, Everybody's very excited. I'm excited, dude. Playing the club. Had to bring yeah. in Ian, super fan of the show. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ian. I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of you, dude. Oh. You're a funny motherfucker. Thank you, bro. Means a lot. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. I'm excited to be at the club, man. It's fucking yeah, best. I'm excited to have you guys. Everybody's been pumped. We're pumped. It's a stroke fest. But you know what, Joe? I'm in town for the club to hang with you and also to promote a special. What do you think? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Only I bring one out every other election year. I know. Nice. It's, I don't have the turnaround you have, man. You're good. It's okay. It's when you put them out, they're fucking magic. Skanks for the Memories is still one of my all time favorite comedy mm. albums. It's a fucking classic. It's weird when you, I'm sure you have this where a fan comes up to you and they repeat one of your most horrific jokes you know like <laughs> hey man those titties ain't i'm like whoa <laughs> say it in a corner <laughs> not here you know what happens to me sometimes people bring up bits that i totally forgot oh true <laughs> i'm like oh my god how does that go i have to ask them how does yeah. it go <laughs> oh yeah i remember that what was it on yep that's what it yeah. is man it's all a blur well we're old yeah david we are old now i am very i was my mom's been in the hospital right I went in there and people thought I was the patient. I was sitting in the room with her and they kept coming over to me. I'm like, her, her. I wish it was a joke. It's not. <laughs> oh, I've known you for at least 30 years. For sure. Yeah. Well, it looks better on you than on me. My so God. that's for sure. That's why I brought in my, uh, my intern yeah. to take some of the slack up. Wait, you guys are the same age? Oh, that can't yeah. be possible. I'm older than you. I'm older than you. How old are you? 59. I'm 56. Okay, well, there you go. See? Yeah. yeah. Three years ago, I looked like that. <laughs> now, now, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> it's all about the maintenance. Well, yeah, you put the time you in. You got to keep that maintenance up. Mm. I saw it coming a long time ago, though. I saw it coming, like, in my 30s. Yeah, but you never were like this. I mean, like, you never were No, like I never flabby. let myself go. Yeah. I never let myself go. I'm so, terrified of it. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I've been injured before. I've had a bunch of surgeries. I know what it's like to like have things not work good. I'm like, oh, you got to do everything you can to make sure the fucking wheels are still on the machine. Yeah. Because if you don't, you know, we all know guys who like Patrice. We lost Patrice. Yeah. We all know guys who don't take care of themselves and mm. fucking shit just starts breaking. What do you, you know, think? They just stop falling apart. I'm glad you brought up Patrice because we've lost a lot of greats. Yeah. But Patrice is the one a lot of people like, you know, uh, super fans always bring up Patrice. What would he do in the age of Ozempic? What do you think? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think he would go along with it. I could see him putting it on like a like a cheeseburger <laughs> or something. You know, he just was not. He's, he's not into a fuck care category. He's not going to do it. Like Brian Simpson got on it for a little while. It was terrible for him. Really? He had a terrible reaction. Wow. Yeah. And I was, and I, I taught those guys how to eat better. I'm like, just stop eating all the bullshit, and you, you'd be amazed at how much better you feel. What do you think is bullshit? Like in these bread times? and carbs, really? not all carbs. Like uh, it's, it's not like vegetables are fantastic for you. Mm. I, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not one of those people that thinks that you should be on any particular diet because I think diets are different for every person. Some people vegetarian, vegan, they're fine. Some mm. people they fall apart. It's you got to figure out what the fuck is right for you, but for everybody, yeah, sugar, mm. really, for everybody, it's even the, sweetener, no good. Well, like artificial sweetener, like, yeah, if that kills you. You're a fucking pussy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Been taking, laughs> that diet coke takes you out. Get the fuck out of here. Overdosed on stevia. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not flayed of xylitol. <laughs> I think I think that um, it's fucking pasta and bread for a lot of people. I know it is for me. I overconsume calories when I eat that stuff. Yeah. Because it's just, it's so wonderful to stuff in your fat face. Mm. Like so when, lasagna when's, or something? Oh, yeah. When's the last time you had a piece of cake? Just like oh, for shits and giggles. I'll do it every now and then. Like once go. a week or something like that. I give myself a day where I don't give a shit. I'll eat pizza. What about, mm. what is carbo loader? Aren't you supposed Car to do a bunch of that before you do like a race or you ride? Yeah. Bikes? Yeah. That's, um, a lot of guys do that. Um, that, that you'd have to talk to like endurance athletes about that, but essentially they're just like taking in a lot of carbohydrates before like ultra marathons mm. and things like that. And then they also have gels. They have these carb gels they'll squirt in their mouth oh, while wow. they're running. Yeah, they're just all about performance. Those those folks are all about just yeah. like trying to squeeze out another 
two or three minutes in a 100 mile race. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I ride a bike in New York City, so I eat a ton of pasta and I'm riding three miles. I'm like, I got a carbo load. <laughs> this is <laughs> but that's a fucking workout, though. Boy, that's yeah. so good for your health, except for the fact that you're breathing in brake dust. Oh, oh. I, think, I think that's the least of it in New York. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like <laughs> you're driving through like a zombie horde, you know? It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Homeless dust. You're yeah. pedaling and you're also kind of basically like, away, get oh, away. Yeah. Thought about wearing like armor. Yeah. <laughs> like, charge of the light brigade I have used my bike chain as like a mace <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. oh yeah just he's got people some, away from you he's oh, got yeah. some great tangles by the oh, way yeah. he has yeah. yeah is it that bad down there oh yeah I mean I, you, you gotta learn sometimes you have to pop off because cars will turn and they act like you don't exist so right. you gotta like yell and everything right and a lot of these guys especially since the pandemic is everything's food delivery so they all go down the wrong way mm -hmm. they're all buzzing around oh, you on the side God. it's terrible and this guy this guy caught me on a bad one i was having a bad day and he was coming at me i was like wrong way asshole and he came up got in front of me stopped and was like asshole you're an asshole and he smacked my coffee out of my hand a white guy yeah it was, <laughs> it was white that's why yeah. i said something it yeah, yeah. Really that southern white. drawl really yeah. gave it he away sounds like a really privileged guy from <laughs> yeah the, yeah the no that's if it was a yelly you know, eh? someone from the bronx <laughs> i would have been like fair enough <laughs> good for you sir i'm wrong so he climbed out smacked your coffee oh yeah and i spit in his face and oh, then wow. Jesus he Christ, dude. and then i got i i went down and then he came up again and took his phone out and uh, started to tape me, and I was like, you're a fucking pussy, you fucking snitch, and then I took my chain, and I was like, you wanna be fucking tough? Let's be tough, and he was no. like, crazy. And I rode away, and I went, welcome to New York, because there's a whole crowd of people watching. That's coming from the guy who just saw Ghostbusters how many times? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a Ghostbuster uh, nut. Yeah, yeah. He's a fanatic. Yeah. He was probably coached. If anyone gives you a hard time, you'll film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Film yeah. them, yeah. shame them. Yeah. You don't like immigrants. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he was French. So oh. that was a terrible ah. French accent. <laughs> well, that was, yeah. I didn't get that at all. Yeah, yeah, I no, didn't get that at all on that one. Like no, no, no. I made him sound Uzbeki, but <laughs> he was French. Yeah, but you got to be careful fighting people from other countries. They play by different rules. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're with a guy, you're tangling, and all of a sudden he pulls out a snake. <laughs> yeah. I got a poisonous viper on me. <laughs> you know who told me that? This guy um, I knew from Malaysia. He said, you know, in Malaysia, you know, you go to a bar and these guys have these rings that are dipped in poison. So, like, you know, you'd be with the guy and all of a sudden he'll, like, on the back, like... Like that, and they're yeah. like, "Ow, oh, what was that? Like a pinprick? And, and then you're dead like a day later. No. It's a Malaysian hello. <laughs> <laughs> like those spears oh, dipped in shit in Vietnam? Something like that. Oh. You could probably survive the spear dipped in shit before you could survive the poison. Yeah. yeah. But I was yeah. like, Malaysia, wow. Tough, it's a tough, tough scene over there. <laughs> well, Ian is, um, you know, uh, what was going to say? Like, um, we've been working together for a long time. Yeah. And uh, he's sober, too, you know, so I'm sorry. This is kind of like a bore. But, um, <laughs> you know, the sober life on the road is not very cool. You know, the chain smoking and yeah. the uh, coffee. But that's pretty go, much it. We go on adventures. We do. Daytime sober adventures. What do you think it would be like sober, no coffee, no oh, cigarettes? I can tell you right now. Suicide. Because <laughs> uh, my plane was delayed and I hadn't had a coffee in 12 hours. I got that weird headache. You know what I'm talking mm. about? It was like, like it, from, the, from the front all the way to the back. And I was like, that's coffee withdrawal mm, right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, you also don't drink water. Yeah. yeah. Water is for, yeah. No. You only drink coffee? Pretty much, yeah. I have to remind Dehydration him to drink is water. my. Yeah, I'm like, here's a water, David. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he just doesn't want it. Oh my god, it's really, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's like the the least you can do for your body, and I'm like, nah, yeah. I don't think so. Well, those connecting flights are hell when you can't smoke cigarettes. Yeah. You know, it's like an eight-hour connecting flight. Then you got to smoke in the family bathroom at the airport. <laughs> There's only one Ugh. airport where you can smoke, and that's uh, Vegas, I think. Is that the only one that has Ten? a booth? It has that weird, yeah, like that's coffin it, room. Yeah, yeah, that kind of everyone you can smoke stare in the at you and shame you. Too? I don't, I, I don't think, think so. so, bro. That is the wildest thing they ever did. Give you a box where you can do drugs in. <laughs> uh, yeah, just there's a, get in there. Yeah, because it's gonna fuck up everybody else. So get in there yeah. so you don't fuck get it up for everybody cage. else. Live get it up, little rat. Well, but, the crazy thing is, you used to be able to smoke on the fucking plane. Yes, uh -huh. I remember it clearly when I was a kid. Dice used to have a bit about it. The really? smoking section. <laughs> We're running a fucking tube. <laughs> it's all the same air. <laughs> 
They, the that's because they had a fucking smoking section. That yeah. joke, yeah. tried doing that joke today. People were like, what? Smoking yeah. on a plane. <laughs> Even what? smoking jokes. People are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. No, I thought smoking was back. I thought all the scenesters, the uh, the posers are into smoking cigarettes now because vaping became too mainstream. I thought that they went oh, to... Oh, that's what I've heard rebelling. in New York, like smoking in a restaurant, smoking in a bar somewhere, just to have like, it's kind of like a retro, kind of a mm. look how cool I am, mm. you know? Well, it's, it's trading the moment for the future. True. That is true. But I was just in a hospital with mean? old people. There's not much you future. You want that moment. <laughs> oh. You trade that moment for like a decay. Yes. A certain amount of decay you're going to experience in your future. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I, you got to live in the moment, you know? <clears throat> sure, until you can't. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, I was just around uh, a lot of old people. Like uh, the woman next to my mom in the hospital, 100 years old. No. And she was no Betty White, by the way. All right? <laughs> it was like, I, we peeked through the curtain. It's like, hi! And it was just like eyes over an oxygen mask glaring at us. Like, whoa, okay, we get it. <laughs> I'll see you at the hardware yeah. store in heaven. She was done. <laughs> <laughs> she was done. <laughs> But you're going to live forever. I mean, we all know that. That's not possible. Come on. No one's living forever. Well, but my goal is just to stay healthy. Mm. Just keep it moving. <clears throat> keep it moving. Make sure, make sure it moves good. Would you eventually segue like from like like a less um, strenuous workout? You know what I'm saying? Like when you get older? Not unless I have to. Like a Tai Chi in a park? Nothing yeah, like that? I get to do a Tai Chi in a park. <laughs> tai Chi in a park makes you look like you read a lot. Mm. You know? <laughs> You know, you're like really into esoteric things. True. You're out there moving <laughs> slow in the park, doing it. <clears throat> an ancient kung fu. In New York, that's called methadone. People are just oh. like <laughs> in their own like world. <laughs> I used to go to this pool hall, and uh, the methadone clinic was right down the street. And so uh, my friend Johnny used to call them the methadonians. They would come yes. in, they'd get their dose, and they'd just come in and play pool. And they'd be like, Shh. That's Perfect. the best. Bro, for sure, they were high. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. This idea that methadone oh, yeah. is like, that's what stops you from using heroin. Right, right. But it also gets you high, Dude, right? Yeah. yeah. That's like yeah. No, I know guys who are addicted to methadone. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I was going to say, that you can take with just a pill, right? Isn't that what that is? You can drink it, too. You can? Yeah. Wow. And, and Suboxone is the same thing. It's yeah, I had a like, guy come in and explain that on the podcast once. He actually ran a clinic uh-huh. at one point in time, and he was explaining how they're just getting you hooked on these other things, yeah. and these other things also get you high. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, have you done it before? No. Suboxone? No, no. But, I mean, it's it's just like... I've heard mixed reviews, though. Some people say it doesn't do that to you. Well, I mean, it's like whatever gets you off the thing that's killing you, you know, it's like harm reduction, but eventually you got to get off that if if you want to be, like, totally sober. My understanding is that methadone is just as bad, if not worse, for you. Really? I don't think it's good for you. I mean, my cousin's on it. She's doing great. (laughs) I think Dr. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there you go. What more do you need? Told me. I think that if, you know, that the problem with fucking any opiates is it's you, your body develops a tolerance. Yeah. And then you go Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. Rush was taking like 99 pills a day or something. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Really? He went deaf from it, supposedly. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that about him. Yeah. Holy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Was going it. hard. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. it's made by him. You know, you know, just like excellence in broadcasting. I just yeah. imagined him just. Fucking blasted out of his mind, 90. wandering He's around his yelling house, yelling the most horrific things <laughs> on opiates. Yeah, you know, it's wow. kind of the life. Rubber band around his balls, <laughs> just, <laughs> no. just fucking out to lunch. Painkillers may have caused Limbo's deafness. Wow, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Could a common painkiller, taken in massive quantities, by the way, uh, contributed to Rush Limbo's well-known hearing loss? Research findings suggest that the radio talk show host's apparent addiction to Vicodin could be the culprit behind his mysterious attack of deafness two years ago. <laughs> Doctors over the past several years have reported dozens of cases of Vicodin addicts who become deaf and in some cases only regain their hearing with the help of cochlear implants, <clears throat> such as the one received by Limbo. It's pretty clear that there's an association, says Dr. Jeffrey Harris, an ear specialist, the University of California, San Diego Medical School. The ear is sensitive to drugs. And this particular association with Vicodin has become more relevant as people are getting their hands on it as a recreational drug. Mm. How many did he take at the height of his pilliness? Find that, because I think it was really <laughs> nutty. That's I think, I think he was up to like, I think he was in the 90s. Wow. A day? A day. 
<clears throat> I took crazy. 90 in a week and I was flying high. I, I took can't a, imagine I, a day. I believe it was Vicodin that I took once when I had uh, knee surgery. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, I was like, I'd rather be in pain. Like, I feel so stupid. Yeah. But then I had a buddy of mine who was a musician and he said he would take it and it would ha really help with his creativity when he's writing songs. Really? really? Wow. Yeah. Sounds like an excuse. <laughs> but it's, I think it's a thing, it's, well, definitely a crutch, right? Yeah. But I think it's a thing where it's like different for different people. Like for some, like for Stanhope, weed is horrific. Yeah, no, yeah. he's not a weed guy. You can't, you can't do it. Yeah, he's, he's an OG drunk. Right, but for yep. me, weed is like, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it. Like, yeah. Everything's great, but I just think it's, I think the the, the diver, diversity of like how the, the differences in people's like just chemistry mm -hmm. is very uh, underappreciated in terms of tolerance to food, in terms of... You know how much you Everyone's can different. exercise, yeah. like uh, what kind of diseases you're gonna get. Like, there's, it's biodiversity, man. Well, you gotta try it to find out. Yeah, we're all fucking different. Like, any yeah. one size fits all. Get the fuck out of here with that. That that doesn't work with people. We're yeah. so different. We're when almost I, like a bunch of different species, is all smushed up together. Yeah. When I had a uh, shoulder surgery, uh, they gave me a pain blocker. Have you had one of those? No. It huh? like lasts about twelve hours, and it just blocks. The, uh, oh, nerve. I have when I had uh, yeah, when surgery. The surgery. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, why have um, why hasn't that gotten recreational? Because it was like awesome. It's like I was walking around like I don't even feel like I had it a an surgery. Epidural where they go into your spine? Is that what you're saying? No, no. They just put something like on it. Oh, I think. No, or no, no, no. You're right. It was in me, and then it dissolved or something like that. Well, so, no, so. with an epidural, they, it's like a spine block. Okay. So they do. It's like if you want to be conscious. Like I was conscious mm. when I got my knee operated on. So they basically paralyzed me below the waist. Wow, <gasps> that's scary. And then they, it was wild. Why would you want that? I wanted to see it. Because oh, I wanted you... to see what the surgery looked like. I wanted to see my knee being pulled apart and oh, screwed God. in together. I wanted to, like, they said I could watch it. Couldn't you just watch it later? No, no, no. <laughs> well, this was 1990, oh, whatever shit. it was. And oh, uh, so, you know, I said, what are the options? And the, 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 the doctor said, well, most people, we just put them under. I go, but why would you not put them under? And he said, because sometimes people want to be awake. And I said, well, what happens if you're awake? Like, can I watch? And he's like, yeah. And I go, okay, let's do that. I want to see it. So you could talk and everything while you were doing it? Yeah, I could. Wow. And yeah. it, you didn't feel any panic? Mm-mm. No, it was interesting. It was it interesting because didn't, I didn't feel any pain, so I was watching the doctor screw it in and hammer it and fucking... Oh, man. I was like, woo! Did at any point were you like, am I dead? No. No. No, doctor was awesome. It wasn't out of body? No, 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 because you're 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 essentially sitting there. I think I I think the way I was seeing it was on a monitor, if I remember correctly. I think there was like they had like a cotton shield in front of me, and my legs were there, and then I was looking up at a monitor, if I remember correctly. It's wow. hard, it's a long time ago. It's hard to remember. And you didn't get but sick. I do remember him manipulating my leg and moving mm. it around, and mm. it was oh. fucked. I didn't have an ACL. So wow. they had to, and it's this pretty serious operation because they have to take a piece of your patella tendon with a chunk of bone from your shin and a chunk of bone from your kneecap, and they pull that out, and then they put it inside your knee and screw it in place. Wow. Just the sounds <clears throat> alone would have creeped me out. It's crazy. Yeah. When you hear the, the bone crunching. Because the, the fucking screw is going into it. You're like, yo. <laughs> I want him to knock wild. me out of the dentist. I can't imagine <laughs> ACL wild. surgery. And then afterwards, he was manipulating it, too. Like, afterwards, I was watching him move it around. And what was the wow. recovery on that? Like, how long? It took a long time. I'm sure. Yeah, that's a long one because it's there's so much trauma going on there. That I think that took like a year before my knee felt normal. The knee is harder than the shoulder, right? In terms no, the shoulder's, the shoulders very harder? hard. Very hard because the shoulder moves all over the place. Oh, okay. This is the only thing I could find. He had <clears throat> he, when he was arrested. They had over two. He had two thousand plus painkillers in his <laughs> in his system or on his, him. His uh, housekeeper claims that he did over thirty oxys a day. But that's oxys. That's not Vicodin. Well, See, that's had, what they gave right? me after my he, he surgery. He had hydrocodone, Loracet. Oh, he had everything. Nor, nor, Norcan, or he had a few things. Oh, which Norcos, could, so. hydrocodone can cause hearing loss, it says. Wow. Imagine, like, what a, a, pill freak. What a hell that is, too, when yeah. you're a guy who has headphones on for a living. <laughs> Like you, and you are, your pill thing is so wacky. <laughs> you can't it's, stop. It's so wacky you can't stop to the yep. point where your your fucking hearing goes away. Yeah, like but now you can't do your job. So good, just with that oxy itch and everything, and then one day you can't hear. 
What a nightmare. The I thing don't think you you're love. feeling good, dude. But he's probably got like five yeah. doctors to write those scripts like that. Because you know, I mean, honestly, isn't it illegal to like? You well, know, he was living in Florida. Oh, uh, that's and this the was pill mill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. like that's the deal. pill mill. Yeah, he that's a great doc on uh, uh, Netflix. That uh, the guys who were making all that money just selling like fake. You know, like it was just like anybody people coming in out of Kentucky. Yeah. Like, hey, I got a I got a bursitis. Okay, here you go. That's my friend Mariana Van Zeller. She it's the OxyContin Express. That that lady, that lady's a gangster. But she uh, exposed the whole thing where they don't have a database. So yeah, you can go yeah. from one place. They're basically pain management centers. Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's all it's, done now. It's crazy. Okay, Mr. Limbaugh and I have maintained from the start that there was no doctor shopping, and when you, we continue to hold this position, oh, that's Mr. Nice. Black said, I love how he says that just that way. Like He's giving up the fact that he's playing a game. We continue to hold this position. Wow. <laughs> you're playing a chess game. You, you're literally like saying it and what you're saying. There's no doctor shopping. I don't know what you're talking about. But maybe back, like he had to be doing this for years and years and years, Yo, right? Yeah, if he's getting 2,000 pills, yeah. you're going doctor yeah. shopping. Or mm -hmm. you're buying it from a drug dealer. It's one of those two options. Amazing. Yeah, but when you have endless money, yeah, you just buy so, out any doctor. Yeah. So what do you do is you go to the, the pain management center. Yeah. You go and you say, I'm in pain. And they go, oh, we'll write you a prescription for drugs. And you go right next door to the pharmacy yeah. that only sells Oxycontins. Mm -hmm. it, only, yeah. it was the Oxycontin Express. Did and you then they would buy them from one doctor and go to another doctor. and do They would just get bags of pills, fill their trunk up, and oh, drive yeah. to Kentucky. Yeah, and it was off 95. So they would just go mm -hmm. from Florida up to Philly, Delaware, New York, Bro, Baltimore. how many cars made that trip before they started figuring out what was going right. on? And, and they, the pharmaceutical drug companies knew it, so they just kept selling it. Oh, they, yeah. They, they were, there was some nutty statistic at one point in time where Florida had like 1,000 times more, yeah. more people <laughs> yeah. prescribed it than anywhere else in the world. I'm making that number up, but it was some nutty number where you're like, what in <laughs> fucking God's name are you people doing? How is that not like an anomaly? It just shows up like this one state has an oh, yeah. insane yeah. amount of prescription. Yeah. Like, is there some pain in that state? Living Maybe in we Florida. should yeah. move people out of that fucking state. <laughs> we, we got the blues. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky, bluegrass. No, but I like the parking lot. Did you see in the documentary, they're like the most like vagrant, like just like redneck, just like just basically oh, yeah. screeching around. Yeah. And then the doctors themselves were armed because mm -hmm. they were so afraid. You know, like oh, those doctors are dealing with zombies. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, somebody runs dry of money and no one wants their dick sucked. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get jumped. I mean, definitely on the way out. It's like an in and out in Oakland. I mean, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> anybody's. <laughs> they would have Christ. in. Uh, there's a book called Dreamland that talks about. Um, the pill crisis and everything and how it started with black tar heroin coming in from Nayarit, Mexico and everything. And there were houses in Ohio that people would line up with stolen goods and trade like chainsaws for pills. And Jesus. then they would take those goods from Home Depot and like sell them <laughs> back to make more money to buy pills. Oh my God. Like a pill economy. I don't know what to say. You know, there's, there's many, the wrong many time. wars connected to that too. Yeah. The conspiracies about Vietnam always had something to do with, with heroin. And the conspiracy about Afghanistan. Oh, with the opium? <laughs> Dude, we were guarding opium fields. Yeah. We were guarding poppy fields. Mm -hmm. The United States troops were guarding poppy fields. And they had Geraldo Rivera go over there to <laughs> gaslight America about it. <laughs> and they played it on TV. Now tell me, why are you guarding this heroin? What they well, say. we have to guard the heroin, otherwise the, the local people won't like us. Like, yeah. oh, makes Weren't sense. Weren't they saying that they had to- Back to you, Tet. That they uh. had to do it from the Taliban or something? Like yeah. The, that was like- Well, that was how, like, they-, they the, the, look, what's the truth and what's the story are two very different things. They were fucking selling heroin. Yeah. Heroin production went up after we invaded by some fucking insane number. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's not like a sh And then these guys are like, we need you to guard this heroin. Of so course. You like us. We're here to guard it. <laughs> so they send fucking soldiers over there to guard heroin. Yeah. Look at Geraldo, his big fucking silly smile. Hi, everybody. I'm in a war <laughs> with a big smile. Mm. So look at this. He's trying to, the smile is to let everybody know that everything's fine. This is nothing to be concerned with. And this is right around the time when 
opium and oxycontin was just flowing in but the look country. at even the way he's like performatively shaking this he's guy's excited. hand in front of the camera like he hasn't met this guy before <laughs> like the whole thing is such a fucking charade fighting the opium trade by guarding the heroin <laughs> they <laughs> Imagine the fucking gaslighting, fighting the opium trade while <laughs> guarding the heroin field so that they could make heroin. Yep. The poppy fields only make heroin. They're not, there's no tomatoes in there. Like, right. <laughs> how, are you, how are you fighting the opium trade by guarding the heroin and ensuring the production? It grinds at your gut. Uh, how do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. Uh, <laughs> we, we provide them security, we're providing them resources, and we're providing them alternatives. And the alternatives uh, are... Hit the brakes. The government became a drug dealer. <laughs> one, like, uh, one fucking hundred percent. There's the no way they're doing that unless they're making some. Mm. The alternative is pumpkins. We thought maybe it could <laughs> pumpkin patch in here. <laughs> Once a year, you know, the pumpkin How about a Christmas tree blues. farm? I know it goes against the culture, but... <laughs> if we just time pumpkin season right, we're going to make a killing, boys. Now, the Vietnam thing is interesting because I know my cousin who was in Vietnam, he came back and he had a heroin problem. But in actual Vietnam, they don't make heroin. It's Laos, right? Yeah. Or it's, it's, it's the, the trade routes. So there you go. It's yeah. like it's in that it's in that zone, that it's triangle. It's controlling the area. Really? You know, the, the, like there's so many conspiracies about what what the real reason why they lied and made up a false attack to get us to go into Vietnam. But uh, almost always it's money. Right. Almost always. There's no way they do anything like that unless someone's making money. That's what they did then. That's what they do now. Now, if you're making money the legal ways, you know, through like selling weaponry and doing all the stuff that we do, but then you realize that there's all this extra money being made here that you're not getting a piece of. Right. If there's trillions of dollars in heroin coming from a place, yeah. you're going to be like, hey, this is kind of bullshit. I'm tired of selling you fuckers tanks. <laughs> <laughs> I want a piece of this heroin yeah. money. Yeah. And that, look, this, this is like so well documented in our country. That's literally what the Iran Contra affair was about. Exactly. That's what? the when yep. we funded the war, the Sandinistas versus the Contras in Nicaragua. Yeah. That's Oliver North. I mean, that's fucking freeway Ricky Ross was selling them the coke. Yeah, but we have to invade them because they hate our freedom. That is important. <laughs> I'm glad you look at it that way, Ian. Yeah. What's really important is framing it in a way that the common person can understand. Yes. I know this seems like tyranny to you, yeah. and there's a bunch of fucking murderous drug dealers at the helm of the wheel. Uh -huh. But that's not the case. Yeah. What about Something fentanyl? Is. What do you think of that? Oh, I love it. I it's got delicious. legs. It's got I wish, legs. Yeah. I wish it was in everything. Um, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. But that's that, out of China, right? It's a, well, they need the precursors. The precursors apparently are coming from China. Okay. Again, China's like, listen, are they buying? Then we're selling. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Isn't this their plan to win the Hundred Year War? To well, get us back with opium. They are yeah. way ahead of schedule. <laughs> Those guys are killing it. Yeah. They're fucking killing it. They're killing it with TikTok. I think TikTok accelerated everything. Yeah, TikTok is the new opium. Mm -hmm. A pu yeah, it, it basically really is. is. Yeah. It basically is. It's and that's our TikTok. Zombies. Their TikTok is all like, you know, it's good. It's Their like, TikTok good is kids. science projects, yeah. <laughs> martial arts. Yeah. yeah. Ours is, are you a child? Be sexy and dance. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, the, drag queens are fun. They must yeah, be yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teacher. You need to know how I fuck. <laughs> yeah. What? Jesus Christ. I'm non-binary. <laughs> so you must use these pronouns. And the kids are like, how many pronouns are there? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? That's, uh, I've never been to China. I know guys who've toured through there. Like, I can only imagine what those shows are like. I mean, <laughs> I guess you do it for the expats. It's not like the locals are dying for American comedy over there. Bro, I mean, yeah. they will fucking put you in the ground if you talk some shit over there. Oh, yeah, no. Don't you, even... you can't go over there and just get drunk and do comedy. Yeah. They will put you in the fucking ground. But you know how, like, when you do, like, a town and you always make fun of the other town, like, to like, get those people on your side? Like, of course. hey, I'm in Pittsburgh. What about that, you know, Scranton? Am I right? Come on. They suck. I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, that's the thing. Like, who do they make fun of? I guess us. That would be really, it's just like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm coming yeah. from America with our, you know, different branches of government. Well, I wish we had just one guy. <laughs> <laughs> one guy, you can get shit done. Yeah. yeah. You can really get That's some shit sure. done. That's for sure. Because what you do is you make sure that the businesses are all on the same page as the government. 
the government owns the businesses. You're all together. You're mm-hmm. all part of it. You can't make a decision without them. That way we're all working in the greater good of the country. You're going to make plenty of money. We're all working in the greater good of the country. And it's a weird hybrid of communism and commerce. Yeah. Like that's what changed when China figured out, oh, no, we need to have competition so people need to be able to make money. Mm. Let them make money, but we'll still fucking run shit. And then, mm. and then I think America was like, I like what she's wearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to. She looks good. Yeah, I want that dress. Mm. I think it's that. That's what I think it is, and I think that's why they're fucking pushing for all this crazy shit today. Mm. People think they're try- really trying to make the world better for people. No, they're not. Shut the fuck up. They're they're trying to get more control out of you. What's your like uh, when you go overseas? Like, do you perform like a tour or like what's your favorite like spot overseas? I love the UK. I yeah, love, I love to go over there. I just love the people. I just love it. They're fun. Mm. It's a fun place. I love England. I love uh, I love Scotland. How about Australia? Have you done that? Yeah, Ooh. I've done Australia. I love Australia. They're I've never fun done fucking that. people, man. They're fun people. You know, there's a lot of America that's like a little uptight. For sure. <laughs> and, and also like very <laughs> judgy. Yeah. Very judgy and very uptight. Yeah. And you know, I know there's a lot of wokeness in England too, but like good old fucking regular drunk English guys are fun. Mm. I like them. I like drunk Irish guys. They're fun. Ireland is good. Yeah, they're fun. The young people there get it. The young people know what the fuck is going on. The, the young people of today are on the internet. And the young people today are paying attention to people that aren't lying. Mm. And they realize, like, oh, we're getting fucked. Yeah, yeah. You, you've been getting fucked. We were getting fucked. We didn't even know we were getting fucked. Well, I mean, when you go overseas, that's the thing of, like, uh, you know, I say start small Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you get it going. But it's, yeah. it's funny how, like, they get all of our references, yet they're better people. You know, that kind of thing? Canadians? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, they're not. I think they are, no? They're 20% no. less douchebags in Canada. How many, fi- would... how many fights have you seen out of Tim Hortons? That's what I want to know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You never see a beatdown. Exactly. You never right. see a like shooting. A I, went to a, I went to a strip club in Calgary, and they, they use the loonies and toonies, the coins, to uh-huh. get the strippers. Right. And people are like, when you go, make sure you don't warm them up with a lighter they don't like that and i'm like what they're throwing <laughs> okay they're throwing hot coins at strippers these are terrible people this, this might be what we call like sampling bias like the study <laughs> that you took of what kind of people canadians are at a whole was at a strip blanket club statement in, and where where was the strip club what calgary town? calgary okay a strip club in a fucking cattle town a frozen cattle town uh-huh. in one of the toughest fucking places on earth to live yeah i forgot it is a cattle town bro yeah, yeah. i've it's got like- some friends that my friends john and jen they live in edmonton and they, they live uh, out in alberta and it's so cold out there. You yeah. can take hot water and throw it in the air, and it freezes before it hits Jesus. the ground. Wow. Bro, they get to 50 below, 60 below. Oh, yeah. A week mm. before I was there, it was negative 30. And then the week I went, it was 32 degrees. And people were like, oh, I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> it was <laughs> fucking but nuts. That's, Hardy. Why, yeah. Hardy that's why they're so cool up there. Mm-hmm. You have to have discipline to live. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be able to shovel your car out mm-hmm. of the fucking snow to stay alive. <laughs> to stay alive. It's like tall. it makes for better people. It makes for more resilient people. People are better when they know how to put on snow tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, this you, guy you in really... the strip club, honestly, <laughs> he really I hate to think you out or anything, but he really like you know how like uh, most guys go and they just kind of sit and observe? Yeah. He's part of the action. He immediately runs in, throwing the dollars, spanking uh-huh. an ass. I'm like, I don't know if you're allowed to do that here, dude. I don't know like where you think I you're like allowed. He's from Delaware, so I assume that's like a in handshake. In Delaware, it's normal. <laughs> yeah, spanking yeah. a woman's ass. But like, I was like, club. And they liked it, too. They were like, oh, finally a guy who gets us yeah. is here. They were like well, into they, him. They want to have fun, and most guys just sit there and like, you know, yeah, so and you, not, you went up and you put a dollar like you were yeah. betting poker. I was like, like exchanging money. I was like looking around for the cameras. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be observed doing this. Yeah. Jesus but it, it was it was really definitely a, uh, that was for uh, Louis Katz's uh, bachelor party. Half, half bachelor party. Half bachelor party? Because I wasn't going to go to Costa Rica with them. I'm too oh. old for that, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, it's so like, like <laughs> Oklahoma. It was like, like boys <laughs> night out. The documentary <laughs> Dave, Chapp- Dave Attell in, down there. Oh, it's Costa, Rica. Costa Rica is awesome, but yeah. the bugs are gigantic. Ugh. 
Bro, they have crazy bugs you have never seen before. They're like birds. Really? <laughs> They're fucking yeah. huge. Nah, uh, I wouldn't be into there's that. Al- uh-huh. There's crocodiles there. I went with my family, and we went uh, on a crocodile tour. It's crazy, dude. They're crocodiles, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, real they crocodiles. Have bayous? Well, they have the crocodile. Well, it's like rivers, and mm. I don't know what you would call it. I guess you could call it a bayou. If it was mm. a, I think bayou is like an American term. Right? Isn't it a French term? Yes, it it's is. It's a French term yep. that they use for Cajun country. CCR term. Yeah, yeah. Boom <laughs> on the bayou. <laughs> That's a jam. Um, but so we're in this boat, right? And my kids are young at the time, and I'm like, "Don't go near there! Don't go near there!" Like every time they go near the edge, one of them is a little daredevil, and she likes to like like lean over the edge. I'm like, "Come on, you fucking thrill seeker! <laughs> These are real dinosaurs, man!" And so we watch this one slide into the water. Oh, so scary. there's a bunch of them on the decks, on the uh, the banks, banks rather, and they're sunning themselves, and you see. These- and 15 feet crocodiles just sunning themselves there. You're like, this is so creepy. And then they slide into the water. You're like, Jesus. Ah, they're under us. They're in the fight. You're in the boat. And I'm like, this is such a bad idea. And all my father instincts are kicking in. I'm like, don't yeah. go near. Don't go yeah. there. Go, hey, 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 hey. You know, like you're like road rage times 100. You're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you're fucking freaking, man. Because oh. if one of them falls in, you're going to go in you too. You have to go oh, in. You yeah. have to go in. Can't leave them. You have to go in and you have to throw them on. To the fucking boat, and, and then, then fight you gotta a figure out to how him. to get up because the crocodile's gonna hear the splashing. Oh Jesus! Wow, it's so scary. <laughs> how about the how about the ocean there too? That's another one where it's like amazing, but there's a lot of shark. Oh, they have shark. a lot of sharks down That's there. That's what I heard. Yeah. Really? Well, it's down in shark Florida, they, they, down in the Keys, they have so many bull sharks that there's a bunch of videos of guys fishing and they're just trying to get the fish in as quick as they can because the bull sharks come along Amazing. and just Jesus. fuck those fish up. Wow. There's, I mean, there's bull sharks everywhere down there. So many that you're allowed to kill them and cook them. Really? really? Yes. You can go bull shark fishing? You can go bull shark fishing in the Keys in Florida. What does that Let's taste go. like? How many are you allowed? <laughs> how many bull sharks are you allowed to take? I think you're allowed to take like one a year or something like that. But people go fishing for bull sharks. How big do they get? And people get mad at them. You're killing sharks! <laughs> because of the propaganda of the fucking shark's fin soup. Oh, oh right. Because people don't understand the size of the globe. And they think that sharks are endangered. But mm. not there they're not. No. They might not be over there. Wherever the fuck they've been killing them and taking their fins off, but in Florida, there's a lot of them. Does it fuck up the ecosystem though if they kill too many of them? Sure, yeah, but we're killing too many fish. Yeah. You know, the problem is it's not just we, me, we, the human race. We're yeah. we've depleted the ocean yes. by something around ninety percent of yeah, all the terrible. big fish. Mm-hmm. And then they told us that plastic straws are the problem. <laughs> so every time I go to a coffee shop, it sucks ass. <laughs> Here it is. Bull sharks are harvestable in Florida with a 54-inch minimum size limit and one per person per day. Oh, oh my God. Per one year, a day. Per day. That's how many they have of them. The oh. world record is from Stewart, Florida with 501 pounds, 92 inches. <sighs> Yikes! The maximum size is about 13 feet with the matures at approximately 14 to 18 years of age. She's wow. a teenager. But they're I believe not... that bull sharks are responsible for almost all of the different shark attacks out there. Wow. They like to bump and bite, meaning they bump their prey and attack it while it's trying to figure out what just hit them. Just like you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> bump and bite. <laughs> That's a strip club strategy. Bull shark. <laughs> they use cut stingrays for bait year-round and our heaviest rods and tackle gear. No doubt you'll get a great show and fight if you catch a bull shark. Would you no ever go bull shark fishing? fishing? I'm not a fishing guy, but I wish I was into that. Like, I like all the gear they have to buy. I like yeah. that when you go into, like, a Dick's and you see, like, that whole wall for, yeah. like, you know, the right anglers and all that kind of the lures and all that kind of thing. I don't know, but I'm not but into you wouldn't it. go? I would go, but Fishing's I'm not awesome. really. Yeah. Try it. Fishing's This is one of the things they just, J- Jamie just pointed out. One of the crazy things about bull sharks is they go into freshwater. Oh, so, wow. So they can go, they've been all the way up into Illinois. <laughs> so they make no bullshit. No bullshit. They the make their way up the river. Up there <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> Even the movie Jaws was based on a freshwater attack that was on a river in New That's Jersey. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Near they Tom's go, River. They go all the way up the river into the. They can. How can they do that? To water fresh and uh, salt water. Because they're they monsters. Do? Wow. They're just designed to kill, and if they they ran out of shit to kill in the salt, they ventured into the fresh. That's amazing. They what made they, it all the way up into the rivers, and they started killing. Things. What are they? What do they look like? The they look like sharks. a shark, like, a, like just the, a regular shark, like a great white type shark. No, or they, yeah, I thought it's smaller. smaller than that. Smaller, no? really. yeah. They're smaller, but it's the same kind of look. Mm, you know. Wow. 
That's what a bull shark looks like. Yeah. yeah see? Oh my god. Look, I at think... that, look at that terrifying fuckhead. Wow. Jesus Christ, dude. That's like the classic look. I mean, <laughs> that guy looks yeah. that guy Do you looks scared. know how many there must be if they let you kill one a day? Sure. Do you know how many there must be? That's yeah, it's great news. Yeah, but how many people are going out specifically like to how catch bull sharks? There's yeah. videos on YouTube of guys doing it. Yeah, they have like YouTube fishing channels. <laughs> For real, and for, no, I'm, I subscribe to a couple. I was YouTube talking. fishing channels. And these fucking dudes go Wicked down shark. there and they catch bull sharks. I Jamie, would... see if you can find like bull shark fishing. Warmer. Uh, warmer sea surface temperatures have led to a bull shark population increase. Scientists say. Wow. Marine wildlife expert discusses whether people should take caution. Yeah, they're gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> take, take, take a lot of fucking caution. These fuckers are dangerous. Oh, that's it. Where They're real it? aggressive too. Oh. I think them and tiger sharks. Oh, bull yeah. sharks, I think, are the most. Oh, What's it say, Jamie? Did you want bull shark video fishing? Yeah, video? bull shark fishing. I want to see the Illinois bull, bull shark, shark fishing scene. <laughs> the thing is, like, people have it in their head, like, oh, you shouldn't kill sharks, right? But you also shouldn't let them kill people. And if you right. get like so many fucking sharks to kill people, you got to kill the sharks. Yeah, but it's also like we shouldn't be eating tuna and salmon with everything Let's eat some that we're taking. Fucking shark, bro. <laughs> I want a shark steak, bro. You used to be able to buy it everywhere. Mako shark was Mako. like a normal thing that. that was on uh, menus. Growing up on Long Island, that was the big, uh, you know, the big get, a Mako. Two bull sharks swam up to Mississippi River to St. Louis. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> See the arch. What a nice little trip. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's how resilient they are. That's from 1937. 1937 fishers. sparked a uh, fisherman's tale from 1937 sparked yes. the researcher's interest in bull sharks sw uh, upstream after two fishermen caught a five foot 84 pound bull shark in Alton, Illinois. So that was uh, in 1937. 58 years later in 1995, a fisherman near Rush Island, Missouri caught another bull shark. That's fucking crazy. What are crazy. they eating? What everything? Wow! Fucking everything. Birds. Mm. Whoever's slipping. Uh, yes. Whoever's slipping, bitch. Oh man. Bull sharks typically live in warm water, in open salt water, but they are one of the few species that can adapt to live in freshwater environments. Do they ever have arguments and they go after each other? I wonder. I, I think they sharks have no eat time each other. Yeah, sharks yeah? do that. Yep. I'm sure they do. Yeah, for sure. Well, they kill everything else. Mm -hmm. Battle bots of the sea. That would be great. <gasps> Fucking monsters, man. That's mm. awesome. I mean, their teeth are just rows and rows of, like, duplicating teeth. So when one falls out, another one replaces it. This is so different from the stuff I look at at home. Like when I'm like, I'm like a koi pond. Like there's something about a koi pond. <laughs> <laughs> like it calms me down. I don't you know what it pet is. Videos. <laughs> yeah. Walter. Anything with parrots. You know, yeah, I'm always yeah, into yeah. that. <laughs> I like that, too. Yeah. I like, uh, this is what I was thinking of doing, like, you take, <laughs> like, you know, there's all these parrots that outlive their owners, so you take them and you make, like, a Supreme Court of parrots. They know all this ancient stuff, because they're, like, old, <laughs> but, like, just, like, you put little robes on them, and it's like, hey, what do you guys think about, and you say an issue, and then, like, whatever, it's like, okay, well, there you go, that's what we should do. <laughs> parrots live super old, right? I, I know, like, 70 years or something. Really? That's crazy. So if you get one when you're 80, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you really are so selfish. <laughs> you know, this poor parrot. Parrot, especially if you treat it well. Yeah, but oh, can you yeah. imagine oh. handing a parrot down to your children in the will? Yeah. <laughs> like, that mm. would suck. That would fuck. I, suck. I think they can live to like 100 years old. I'm -uh. not sure. Like a tortoise. Like they have that kind of age to them. They really can live a long time. There's a few animals where like once you get them as a pet, you know, you're there and it is for your kids. And do they keep learning phrases? No, I think they kind of like just... No, like three things. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Some pets, such as tortoises and parrots, may live for over 50, 50. years. Okay, well, I was wrong. Wow. But, you know, uh, tortoises live like into their hundreds. So, <laughs> provide That's... documented pens for their pet parrots in their wills. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Lawyers yeah. often urge pet parents. Yeah. <laughs> pet pa lawyers. That's just lawyers weaseling in on some I'm of that a pet, pet parent, parent money. attorney. Yeah. <laughs> That's a leap of faith, like, because I just did a will, like, and to my parrot, I'd like you to, it's like, yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, this parrot can't, he can talk, but he can't, you know, testify. It says some species live yeah, 75 to 100 years. Oh, wow. my God. Wow. You got to go with an old-fashioned pigeon. That's like, what, three weeks? <laughs> like, six weeks if he's healthy? <laughs> do you know the pigeons were all brought over here for food? No, I didn't know that. Really? I thought they were from here, no? No. England? No, they're an invasive species. Wow. I guess they were brought over from Europe. 
Uh, but they they were a food source. That's what squab is. You oh, it squ is squab's pigeon. Really? See squab? Yeah, you, all those pigeons in New York City, one hundred percent, you can shoot them and eat them, and they're good. I wish we were allowed. Oh, that'd be so good fun. luck to that. Yeah, just, the gun, park. just pink, pink, just shoot <laughs> yeah. them, and then you just put them in a bag, take them home, and pluck them. Oh, <laughs> man, like that's literally, terrible. you could hunt wild meat. In yeah, Central they, Park. So when people go out, let's squab. Is that what they're really talking about? Like pigeoning? That's what. Well, is that's that what, what squab is. Yeah. Mm, whoa, squabble. Wow, from, yeah. from some sort of fight with pigeons. Easy, Webster. Maybe. <laughs> I wonder. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's what they're just going to squab. Yeah. Yeah. Where the? F that's a weird word. It are is we squabbling. What are yeah. we squabbling about? That doesn't even sound like a fight word. No. How, how can squabble? you fight after hearing that? Squabble <laughs> sounds like something. Somebody squabble. No. Happens to your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I, squ well, I ankle squabbed on the way squabbled. in. <laughs> Go yeah, to well, the that's doctor a, and get a squirrel. What about squirrel? That used to be uh, like a frontiersman. Hey, I, I shot some squirrel. Right? Oh yeah, people still eat squirrels. Yeah, they eat squirrels uh, all throughout the South. I have mm -hmm. friends that hunt squirrels. Some friends of mine want to take me a uh, squirrel, raccoon, and rabbit hunting while I'm here. Wow. Yeah, he's a good shot, by the way. He really a, is good. Really yeah. hard time killing a raccoon. I just think raccoons are so cool. They're the cutest. They're not just. They have little cheap. hands. They got little hands. Yeah, and they're they smart have as little shit. hands. Yeah. Have you ever seen them eat like uh, cotton candy and water? And it disappears, and they get so confused. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it's the cutest. That's weird. Because yeah. yeah. how they eat, they pick up their food, and then they run and eat it. Yeah. So they try to pick the cotton candy up, and it goes away, and then they're like, what What happened? Oh, it's that's so funny. cute. I saw a raccoon really? in front of the um, Chelsea Hotel uh, oh, right next to Gotham. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? That, that was weird. This is crazy. He's searching for it. I lost oh, it somewhere. Poor little guy. Oh, what a dirty trick to play on a raccoon. Uh -huh. Look at him. He's so fucking frantic. Oh, oh he yeah. found it's like it. Someone he, when they lost their vape. Set that down here. What the fuck? Where's that bull shark? <laughs> 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 you can't escape me. <laughs> I can even do a water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Comes up to the toilet. Remember that was always a thing that snakes were gonna be in the mm -hmm. toilets in oh, New York yeah. City. I was thinking about that the other day. Rats like, do that. Like if a rat really like came up and went inside of me, like <laughs> whose side would the EMTs be on? <laughs> oh, here's, here's one I always want to know if it's true. Alligators in the sewer. They, yeah, is that I heard real? That. As a kid, oh. that was like a big people deal. People would have pet alligators, and they would release them in the sewer. Yeah. It was always in video games. Right. There's a movie the about it too. Ga there's a movie like it was like a horror movie in the '80s about a gator that was living down in the sewers, and like you know now he's like humongous, and he's <laughs> and he's and he's going to eat somebody. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a cool thing. That was a great uh, urban myth. Yeah, is that, that was, it? But was it real? Did uh, they ever find alligators in the sewers? See, mm -hmm. they found any alligators in the New York City yeah, sewers. Yeah, but how would they get there? They said that they People would... throw, throw them away. Pets. Yeah. That's how, like, you... most of Florida is infested with pythons. Pythons. And a bunch of those came from people's pets. Yeah. Not all of them. They, they found out, they used to think it was all pets, but then they found out that there was a research lab that got hit, that was filled with pythons, that got hit with, a, wow. a, like, a hurricane or a tornado or some shit. Sounds like a horror movie. Yeah, and the, the pythons got loose. That's a terrible death, I think. And I think python, python death. death. Oh, boy. Just I mean, honestly. Would yeah. you rather python or bull and shark swallowed death? head mm. first. <laughs> well, python you could smoke. While you're dying, where's the <laughs> bull shark? You're you're in the water. You're already kind of like I'm fat. You know, my man boobs are being. You know, anything that happens in the water is ultimately more terrifying. Because True, you can't move good in the True. water. Dude. You can't get away. Did you see that video of that guy jumping off the cruise ship and they videotape and he just disappears into the night? Yeah. Oh my god. That yeah, was it. Some like a couple years ago. Was now. trying to impress his friends <gasps> and he jumped off into the water. And he drowned. Current took him away. And in the video, you just see. Just a head bobbing and disappearing into the darkness. Oh my God! What a terrible way to die. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, being an idiot, a drunk young yep. kid. You know, yep. I feel sorry oh, for. Oh God! Mm -hmm. The comic on the cruise ship. The next day, he has to do a show. Oh, <laughs> I know everybody's a little down. <laughs> if it was Tony Hinchcliffe, he'd be immediately making fun of that. Oh yeah, yeah Tony. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck was wrong with that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he can't swim. Uh, the conditions have led to the myths of several uh, special breeds. The lack of sunlight creates a blind albino gator. <laughs> wow. Uh, but is it true? So it started off as a myth, but there have been reports of not only sightings, but they have pulled a couple out. But the original reports were like there was hundreds in there a year, and I don't think I think that's a myth. Wow. They've pulled a couple out? Of it, yeah. I mean, that's... The, how many did they pull out? It started, like I said, it started off oh. as a myth to like became truth. Like this is a nonprofit says they pulled out five 
Oh, they're just little. They yeah. pulled handled out five, five alligators. Handled five. I don't oh, they've handled them five gators yeah. in the past two years. That's still a lot. Sewer. That's pretty good. None and they the eat the uh, rats, right? Oh, none from sewers, it yeah. says, though. So yeah. this is like people that have pets. Yeah, like right. in their bathtub. That's oh. such a weird pet. Do you like know exotic. That? There's a dude who lived. That guy. Somewhere. <laughs> I think there's a dude who lived in Harlem. With the yes. tiger? With the tiger? Yeah. In his apartment? Yeah. What? Yeah. Crazy. And there's a photo of it in the window. Yeah, like the like someone's like <laughs> trying to climb up the fire escape, and you see a tiger in the window. Yeah, that's the most that's insane amazing. thing of all time. That's crazy because someone's got to go in and deal with that thing in an apartment. Look yeah, at that. Th look yeah. at that. Yeah. Oh, in look an at apartment. This. He's so angry. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to fuck that guy up. Uh huh. In an apartment. What about the neighbors? I mean, like honestly. Bro, that's got to be tough. How bad does that apartment it's, smell? Oh, for sure. Because uh, you're not going to stop that thing from pissing on the walls, <laughs> right? He's going to mark wherever he wants. So Wait, he's is that gonna... a snake next to the tiger? This guy's into exotic Coiled shit. Coiled up? Yeah. It's hard to tell. Uh, it's hard to tell. That so, looks like a turtle. That's so unfair <laughs> to the tiger. Oh, it's no. so rude to the tiger. Living but up so in, is the zoo, by In the, the Bronx. Way. What? The, the zoo. <laughs> Bronx you know, tiger. Like, like, it's like, when are we going to move to Manhattan or something? You know, it's like, I'm sick of being. <laughs> We're nowhere near the park. Not, no, the action. <laughs> there was a really good, uh, this uh, uh, owl escaped from the uh, Central Park Zoo, and they tried to capture him, and they couldn't. And then they said, he'll just be fine. It's living out there in Central Park. He's eating rats and pigeons, and so he's, like, helping everything. And then he just flew into a building and died. It was sad. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. It's like, flew he finally got out. He was, like, looking for a mate. And then he just, like, at night, because he's owls, you know, they're night people. People, so it's just like flew into somebody's building and killed himself, you know. But I thought they fly good at night. That's what I thought. I guess not. I guess he was, he was half owl, half seagull or something. <laughs> well, birds get really confused by glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was him, Flacco. Flacco. <laughs> Dead. Oh, 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 man. Poor Flacco. That's great. Flacco probably thought he was going into an opening and he hit a window. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, look at him. But yeah, he was he was like escaped, you know, um, catch and release, bail, you know, bail reform. You ever had that happen out. in your house? <laughs> you ever have that happen in your house? You just hear dunk, and it's uh, the sound of a knock on glass, and you look out and you see a bird just dead. Oh, jeez, oh. No. If I hear it sunk on my glass. I live in Brooklyn. It's just an angry teenager. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like when you drive through Nebraska, and like all of a sudden, like weird shit starts hitting your windshield. You know, it's oh, like, yeah. what is that? Is that a grasshopper? What is that? Thing? Oh, yeah, like you huge know? bugs. And like, stuff. And it's just like. Uh, for the amount of bug and the amount of shit that comes out of them, you're like, wow, that didn't make sense. You know, it's like uh, a splatter. Imagine driving through a locust storm. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, oh man. Will they just flood the skies? Oh, for God's sake. You know, locusts and grasshoppers are the same thing. I didn't know that. What? Yeah, grasshoppers like turn into locusts. It's like a s specific thing that can happen to them. I don't know if it's like a population thing. Or like caterpillars like a, into a butterfly? Uh, no, because it's not. it doesn't always happen. Oh. Like, f find out, like, what turns grasshoppers into locusts? Holy shit. Holy mm. It's something really nutty. Wait, if you can look eat... Look at this. Look at this locust swarm. Check this out. Well, whatever they are, they use whatever bathroom they want. Gee. <laughs> Each swarm <laughs> contain up to 200 million pests. Ouch. How about living creatures, you fucking piece of shit? <laughs> They're not pests. They're Wait, much so more that's a grasshopper. Yeah. If, yeah, and they turn... So, but, but just Google yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what it is. Can't you eat this? I mean, I think yeah, grasshopper is edible. If you can eat grasshopper and cricket, can you eat locusts? Yeah, for sure. So what are we crying about? You can eat most bugs. <laughs> Open your mouth. You can eat a lot of bugs. <laughs> Various species of shorthorn grasshoppers in the family, but like they, they have so a swarming odd. phase. So what causes them to swarm? Locusts and grasshoppers are the same in appearance, but locusts can exist in two different behavioral states. Solitary and gregarious, whereas most grasshoppers do not. When the population density is low, locusts behave as individuals, oh. much like grasshoppers. So it's a population thing. Oh. I thought it was me. Why do grasshoppers turn into locusts? The term locust is used for a grasshopper species that change morphology, morphologically and behaviorally on crowding, forming swarms developed from bands of immature stages called hoppers. The change is <laughs> described as density-dependent phenotypic plasticity. Yeah. Wow. So it's density-dependent, so it's like it's something about the population that causes them to go fucking nutty. And so they look real different. Like, look wow. at they, they, their color changes. Oh, man. Isn't that bizarre? That one's tough on the top there. 
That's so cool with the knees back there. They got to make a drone or something like that. I mean, honestly, they <laughs> look like pretty wild. It is pretty nuts. Super swarm of locusts in mm. the Illinois, Indiana, Ohio area this year. Wow. Oh, two, really? Two, you know, like they they bury themselves or they hibernate <gasps> for like twenty something years. Oh That's a cicada, God. I thought. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, well. I Please, use them <laughs> it's my big thing. The <laughs> cicada, cicada? Bird. cicada, yeah. The cicada, oh, cicada, cicadas, cicada. they eat those too. Every seventeen years or thirteen years, the cicada return. I always love that when they yeah. come out. It's just like they're annoying. They're <laughs> everywhere, shedding their skin. They're really loud, but they eat those too. Wow. I know a lot of people um, online uh, have videos about how to cook cicadas. Ew. They That's use, all like, things. teriyaki sauce and you bake them. Apparently, they're delicious. It's protein, right? Trillions will Apparently be present. It's trillions! <laughs> oh, trillions! Awesome. Since cicadas will emerge from Maryland to Oklahoma, Illinois to Alabama, clearly trillions of adult cicadas will be present, but not all in the same place at the same time. Yeah, well, that's... I would hope not. <laughs> Can you imagine? There's trillions of those fat bugs. That's crazy. Imagine the border. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're cool. They sound cool. So, But they're out every year, right? In small numbers? Is that what the deal is? And then, uh, yeah. Are, are they the ones that make the noises yeah. at night? Mm -hmm. Are they? Is that the deal? Like they're out every year in small numbers yeah, and then so every... Here's the, like, the, it's called a brood. So, yeah. So like there's different sizes of them that... Wow. Those Come out or, or emerge every year, I guess is what it's called. This is what the World Economic Forum wants us to eat. <laughs> you will eat bugs and you'll be happy. happy. But the and thing is, nothing. you need to know that you can eat them. They're, you can eat they're, them. They're, they're very edible. And my, my friend, um, Ryan Callahan, he, he had like a recipe for cooking them. He talked about like, just take them, put them on a sheet, use teriyaki sauce, mm. like a teriyaki glaze, cook them. Apparently they're delicious. You I would stir fry, fry them, it, right? but I don't know if I'd. I ate them and I ate grasshoppers in Mexico. Mm, really? Was it crickets? Might have been crickets. Do they do they like deep fry them? Or they how do they fry them somehow? Like I don't pan know. Pan sear them? Something like that. Mm. I don't know, but they had a bowl of them in the room. I think it was crickets. And I was like, first of all, that's weird because like crickets are the only bug that I don't kill. Like if I find a cricket, I catch them with my hand and I bring them outside. Really? Yeah. If I find a spider, you're fucked. Really? The spiders are fucked. Yeah. Wow. I'll kill you. you yeah, that me. looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once like you cook it up. It. They call it uh, chapelinis. That's how you say it? I would do that. Dried and roasted grasshoppers, a pre-Hispanic Mexican delicacy. They're small, most are shorter than the length of an adult pinky, and nutty in flavor. Ooh. The cooking process can add additional flavors such as lemon, garlic, and chili. I thought so, it was South, Southeast Asia or something where they So yeah, maybe, it, maybe it's grasshoppers and I thought it was crickets. It looks like that. Either way, um, I grasshoppers that. I don't kill either. What about like, uh, are you like an adventure food guy or no? Yeah, I'll try some different stuff. You know the thing in the Philippines where it's like an egg, but like it's it's like the fetus is already like, you know, it's not Balut. like a... Yeah, have you had that? Yeah, we used to serve that on Fear Factor. Oh, And geez. my Filipino friends are like, get the fuck out of here, I eat that easy. Like, what are they scared to eat it's, that it's for? It's terrifying Wait, looking. What, what is it? It's basically it's like a, a baby a fertilized bird. embryo yeah. mm -hmm. of, uh, it's a duck, is that what it is? is I have no idea what it is. It and looks so you disgusting. you eat the egg and the, the embryo is... Yeah. Develop? Yeah, see, there's like a yeah. thing in there. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So people eat the whole thing. They eat the little baby. They eat the yolk. Oh. They eat everything. That, to me, yeah. is like too much. It's rough. Yeah, it's got to be. You're getting beaks in there. Oh, God. I'm such a baby feet. with food. So yeah, I'm like, feet, beaks. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if I tried that. I don't think I did. That sounds like a really good treat for like a dog. Like, hey, look at this an egg and a, like a, a bird in there. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. here you go, buddy. I ate so many things on Fear Factor, I kind of forgot all the stuff I ate. I don't think I ate one of those. Snake, though. of course, right? But No, I never ate snake. Really? Would no. you eat everything that they ate no, to be I like, did. I ate it, it's I, fine? I would do it if I thought someone someone really, really needed to know that you can do it. And I'm, mm. I'll do it for no reason. I'll do it for no reason. I can't even win just to show you that you could do it. Like, mm. you do this. You just wow. do it. Just just decide you're going to do it and do it. It's so paternal. Well, huh. it's just like coaching. Yeah. And I'm trying to help these people. Yeah. That, that's a weird moment, being on TV trying to eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> What's the side? Yeah. You know, it's like, and hey, can I get some fries with that dick? Yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> fried pubes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I think it was cool that uh, you know, in New York, there's always like the the new restaurant, the new hot thing to mm -hmm. eat and stuff like that. I'm never into that. I'm not mm -hmm. a food guy like that. You like, you're into everything, right? I'll try anything, but I, I 
definitely in my comforts that I go back to. Yeah, man, it's just so hard. That's why Austin's so good. They got great food here pretty much from uh, beginning, you know, like well, the morning to date the yeah, till night. There's so many good food trucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot, lot of great options. And there's a lot of, you know, just there's a lot of cool shit to do here. It's, it's not overwhelmed. It's like your perfect size. Mm. And what's the, um, I was going to say, um, you know, we're doing the club, right? And that 6th Street, has it settled down or is it still like popping the way it is? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's a crazy, that end of it too is kind of the craziest end. Yeah, it it's is. It's fucking yeah, wild. We're in the heart of it. When you're old and you walk down that street, it's a whole different experience. Nobody gets it. Like when you're an old person with like a, a mortgage and you're walking <laughs> down the street, they just see all that. The only place I think uh, almost as equal is San Diego, mm -hmm. like uh, that street where the American Comedy Club is, because mm -hmm. there's just nothing but like drunks, fights, right, um, right. just squad cars coming from every direction oh, yeah, all the yeah. time for like two hours. Then it's like quiet again. But it's just like this amazing kind of like, um, you know, um, like like almost like somebody said like you know rung a bell it's like be nuts you yeah, know it's like people a weird go crazy purge for a couple hours a purge yeah, yeah. the purge yeah. it That's is it like, feels that, like a bunch of barefoot drunk women <laughs> god but, so crazy but yeah that that just that that street man is so it's very stuff going overwhelming on. But that's a good place for comedy, both in San Diego and here. It's for like sure. to be around that chaos and then come inside, you're mm -hmm. a little like more used to chaos. Mm. A little more used to like some nuttiness. Mm. Bring some pop. You know? Bring yeah, you're, you're out there waiting in line and you just fucking crackheads yeah. everywhere. We have security out there to protect them. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's that's a sketchy fucking That's street. like a cellar now in the West Village. Like these people line up to go see a comedy show and then there's just people <laughs> costing them for money and singing songs <laughs> in their face. And then they come in like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Do you feel a noticeable change in the city yes. with the immigrant thing? Oh. It depends what part of the city you're in, yeah. but definitely around like the Port Authority, mm -hmm. Midtown, you'll definitely see more Times of, Square, of yeah. that kind of uh, you know activity. And that's over on. how much time? Uh, I'd say the last six months, three months, something so like that. So where do you think this goes in six years? <laughs> Nowhere good. Is it Delhi? <laughs> is it? I, I I really don't know, but there is like a there there definitely is like a mood in that part of town, yeah. and it's it's everywhere by the way. But that that's where you see, I see it the most. Where I'm like, whoa, look look at like uh, the bus station here, like just outside. It's just there's basically... never been more mango and candy being sold on the streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is well, I'm good. a fan of both mango. Shaved and candy. ice yeah. is it's so much easier to get. Yeah, but can you imagine being like 19 and living? you know, in, in a terrible place and you're just so poor and you're like, wait, I get to go to a place where I get away with crimes with my boys? Let's go. And oh, you're yeah. just like a group no, of lost boys. They just boys. let you right out of jail when you beat up a cop yeah, on yeah. TV? Yeah. It's but a we are such suckers. We're such suckers as a nation to let this happen. It's so dumb. It's the dumbest fucking thing. It's happening right in front of everybody's face. So what do we do? What do we do? And none of our elected leaders are doing anything to stop it. Yeah, but we weren't can't. they shipping them to like Martha's Vineyard and Bro, stuff? Did that do anything? Well, that was Texas. That's yeah. our guy. Our guy's awesome. Yeah. He ships them. He's like, okay, you guys want, fuck, you don't want to deal with it? You want to let these people in? You yeah. want sanctuary cities? Good. We'll send them to the sanctuary city. So just start busting people to New York. Yeah. That's, he, our guy is responsible for what's happening and a lot of what's happening in New York. That's how they got up there. Yeah, thanks. Well, but now the government's flying them places. They're flying them to different cities. You can ask where you want to go. They give you money. They give you a cell phone. And the thing that's really freaking people out, especially people in poor cities in this country, is like, where's that fucking help for us? Yeah. You got these people housed in the Roosevelt. You give them three f free meals a day. Mm -hmm. sure. Plus you give them money. And Income. they can masturbate wherever uh -huh. they want. <laughs> it's amazing. That's is true. That real? <laughs> yeah. And anywhere they want. And for a long yeah. time, for a rule? long time. It's happening a lot. For a long time, especially in New York, they would look at you guys down here and go like, you know, what do you, what do you, and then they finally got to experience it. And it's probably, what we experience is probably just like one tenth of what you guys have to do being right on the border. So, well, we're no, not on was, the border, but, but I'm saying know. like Texas. So but if you're down South, you know, if you're like way down there, the border town. Yeah. If you're in, you know, Juarez, like right outside of Juarez, if you're, that, that's, you're real close. I mean, yeah. it's coming over yeah. and it's affecting you. Well, it's a little wild because I don't see many kids. There's yeah. not many families coming over. Well, here's the thing, though. For real, it's very dangerous to bring your kids through a fucking migrant stream that's walking yeah. into yeah. Mexico. So are they a lot coming of here to work and then send money yeah, back? Yeah, there's definitely that. Mm -hmm. There's, But also military-aged men from other countries, including sure. Middle Eastern countries, 
including China. It's like that's real too. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you're not compassionate for the people that are doing exactly what I would do if I was living in Ecuador and I didn't have any money mm -hmm. and there was no job opportunities and I knew that I could get into America and I'd get a job and if I busted my ass, I could make it and it would accept me. And not only accept me, but help me yeah. and give me money. And you, t you hear from your friends, bro, Every time you go across the border, they give you 2200 bucks. So there's guys on the radio, in Spanish-speaking radio in San Diego, telling guys how they went back and forth four times in a month. Yeah. And then they so have they the... got eight grand in a month. Jesus. Yeah. So they're living nice just by crossing back and forth and just continuing to do it. Well, did you read the story about the guy? I think it's from <laughs> Venezuela. I had to make a move. He's telling yeah. people how to get over the border and then squat in houses and yeah. like how you'll just get yeah. like, you know, it's like they won't throw you out of their house. It's oh, not yeah. like where we're from. You can just get in the house yeah, and then you can stay there. Queens. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, the so, lady got arrested yeah, she for got changing arrested. the locks on her own home. Uh -huh. and that then to me is crazy. They're the also squatting. saying in New York, if you're in a house for 30 days, you legally That's become right. a tenant. Yeah. That's right. If you get mail sent to the place in your name, it's yours. That is bananas. That is crazy. Dude, I love this story. I think it happened in like Seattle or Portland or something. This this guy was uh, at every you know march and rally, and he was like big Antifa and communism. And he met someone there, and the guy was like, hey, can I crash with you? And the guy was like, yeah, sure. So he brought him and his girlfriend mm -hmm. and stayed on the couch. And after two weeks, the guy wouldn't let <laughs> the homeowner into his own house, and he had to call the police, ah. <laughs> which is like against their religion. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we don't know what to tell you. Holy shit. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Isn't that the best? Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's I, amazing. I was talking to friends of mine. There there's like there's like over a thousand squatter situations in Atlanta. And they're like, Well, it's only a thousand. The population is this big. It doesn't really matter. I'm like, dude, ten people doing it is alarming. Yeah, a thousand is <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yeah. That means they know how to do it. They know the loophole. Yes. And you need to tighten that loophole up, you fuckheads. People are so smart. They know how to jock the system. A hundred percent, especially criminals and yeah. fraudsters, which is the type of person who's got, I mean, you imagine they're filming them. This is my house. Yeah. They're filming <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, dude. This is where I live now. Uh -huh. And they know that you have to pay them to get out. And that's what a lot of homeowners do. But the problem is that another person is just going to jump in. Well, and the eviction process is so long and you have to hire a lawyer, yeah. you have to go to court. And it's then all on the homeowner. And good yeah. luck trying to sell the place, because if you're not there in the house, they'll just squat. But they always hold up like a dirty piece of paper. I have a lease. And yeah. it's just like like a happy face <laughs> and a house crayon. behind it. Yeah. <laughs> this guy was explaining how he did it. This guy was explaining how he did it in this YouTube video. He was saying that he you get a fake lease, mm -hmm. so you draft up, draft up a fake lease, you use that lease to get the power and things turn in your name, you pay the bill, like there's a bunch of different steps that you can do that just seems to indicate that you are the legal resident, right. and then they have to take you to court. And it could be months and months Years. before you even get a trial. Yep. And where do they stay, the homeowners? They're fucked. In a migrant They're hotel? The cra the, uh, it's so crazy that in the name of protecting tenants, which is important, you yep. don't want a shitty landlord, you want yeah. to protect the tenants, mm -hmm. but in the name of protecting tenants, you're, you're basically allowing people to steal people's houses. For sure. And yeah. not just one. If Atlanta has a thousand, what is the number of people they're squatting currently, Jamie, in the United States? I don't know how you know that. Well, try Google. I mean, well, just, just try did Google the census. That. Why don't you ask ChatGPT? <laughs> Ooh, it's not only that they're squatting. That's scary. Let's see what that bitch says. You see how they abuse the house too? Like mm -hmm. they'll like smear shit on the walls. They'll do all kinds of yeah. things. Lenny Dykstra did so that. So I'm like, you really own this his mansion? Because <laughs> America uh, business in oh, that's 2010. Well, no, I yeah, think Lenny Dykstra did it, and it was his mansion. Yeah, and they were, like, evicting him, and he's like, all right, well, I'm going to take a shit on the floor. <laughs> Is that yeah. what he did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then didn't Gretzky buy the house? He bought it from Gretzky. Oh, it was he Gretzky's bought it from Gretzky, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he shit all over it uh -huh. when they were taking it away from <laughs> yeah. him. Fuck uh, you. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story, though. He wasn't a squatter. Yeah. He just went broke. Yeah. That's like when you go to a friend's house, you have a party, and, like, that last guy who has nowhere to go, he's like, hey, man, you know, we can... <laughs> it's like... It's like this is a different level, Your Honor. <laughs> Bro, the guys you can't get out of your parties are the worst. Yeah. That's, that's the main reason why people don't want to have parties. I don't know. Not the one guy who won't leave. Yeah, got to get up early, man. You know, that's all right. I can barely get people to leave my yeah. podcast studio. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they get a little drunk and they just don't get the hints. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you're like, you are drunk. You must leave. Lights out. What? What are you doing, man? 
Are you fucking? Yeah. Are you uh, fucking tripping, bro? Yeah, I was that like, guy. It's five in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I would just curl morning, up on their welcome Ian. mat like a cat. Uh, <laughs> Wake up the next day. That's what happened. That guy had that K, uh, the Kansas City Chief yeah. party, and then the guys go outside. They're like, "Dude, can't we just hang a little bit longer? You know, maybe it'll warm up." He's like, "No, you got to go." And then they all like Frozen they popsicles death. outside. Really? Yep. Yeah. Like, wow. how many of them died? Like, uh, it was like four of them, I think. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Like, they found the bodies like right outside. You know, it was, you, but it was really a, such a bad hang that you ended up freezing to death. <laughs> Wasn't there like some controversy to that story? Like the they the, don't know. Yeah, yeah. the The story seems fishy. There's something with um, it. Might have been drugs. It might have just been like mm. you know they died somewhere else and he put them out there. You know. Well, who I knows? think there was some controversy with the guy who called it in. Like they didn't he didn't do it quick enough. Or mm-hmm. some, I forget what it was. They but were the high. People though. started getting suspicious. They, they were, were very high, high though. They um, were very what. You know, they were drunk and they were just mm. doing powder, I bet. Something like that. <clears> maybe know? oxys. Yeah. Maybe that's why they just fell asleep outside. That's just Okay, really what does ChatGBT say? As of my last update in January 2022, I don't have access to the most recent statistics on the number of people squatting in houses in the U.S. Squatting is often a complex and underreported uh-huh. issue. That's a government. Obtaining and accurate data can be challenging due to its illegal and unauthorized nature. Mm. You may need to consult recent studies, reports, or data from relevant so organizations you, or bitch. government agencies. For the moment. Well, this is Chat GPT four, Chat GPT five. It would be like, I know how to get them out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your plan. You fucking send a robot. When I quickly, I, I don't know the full thing in Atlanta, but the first article I pulled up said it one thousand two hundred uh, homes. Yeah. <gasps> they're institutional I investors. I don't know like how many of them are people buying houses and never living in them, and there's vacant houses everywhere. You know what? Like uh, Airbnbs type things. It was a bunch of Airbnbs, you know, that kind of situations going on right now where a bunch of... So they, like, move into the Airbnb and they just stay? It could be. I know that def- there are definitely people doing that because this lady videotaped this woman who wouldn't leave her place. She's like, I'm not going nowhere. And you have and to keep like, the lights. See this bitch? This bitch is in my fucking house and she's yeah, cooking in my fucking kitchen. Yeah, but can beat the shit out of them and then just know you'll be out the next the, day? The problem is be... it's already, a, everyone's aware that this is an issue already by then. So now they've got their eye on you and you can't really just say this person is in my kitchen. They attack me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you'd have I, to fight to the death. Mm. You have to keep the lights and the heat, all that on as the homeowner. Because if you shut it off, that's like a big uh, red yeah. flag. They're, like, you're not allowed to do that. Well, they so. might not even be allowed to be in the home. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of this came in New York City from um, the Idiots. till program. and Well, in the 70s with all the houses and buildings just being completely abandoned and turned to shit. And yeah. A lot of people were squatting. That's right. Because they were like homeless. So they were like, all right, well, we have to figure this out so that we don't have all these people on the street. You know, Tompkins and then Square they just didn't change it. Yeah, in the eighties, I remember they they um, back. I guess that was like a Giuliani thing, actually, where they were like, "We got these squatters in these buildings, and we want them out." You know, like in order to repurpose the building, they had to get all these people that had already set up power and all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. to the buildings. So the the cops would go in, and then you would just see like a rush of like skinhead looking dudes mm-hmm. come flying out through the park, and they would like it tussle was like with old the punk cops. Rockers. It was crazy. Yeah, and it was just like they were squatters. They were like you know street kids that were living in these buildings yeah. so where the fuck do they go mm. but that's when some of the best music came out of new york city <laughs> they were all musicians the early 80s. squatting <laughs> together yeah probably right yeah totally agnostic front and you know um bad brains and everything they were all squatting mm. pro mags makes you legit mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, as a homeowner, that's one of my biggest fears. <laughs> Squatting. I'm on the road. I come back. Uh, so is it your oh, yeah, so it's in my house. <laughs> Hello, oh, David. If, it, if it's New York, some lady just, uh, they think this lady got murdered because she went into yep. a house that was uh, her house to clean it up, and there were squatters living in there, and then they fucking killed her and put her in a bag. Yep. Jesus. Yeah. The cutting them up, that's the thing. And then there's, you know, then the problem is, like, good luck catching them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just gonna. There's no paperwork on these people. They're just mm-hmm. wandering around the street, the city. Squatters suspected of killing woman in New York City apartment, stuffing her body into duffel bag. Yeah, victims found squatter in mother's vacant apartment. What a According horrible to way to sources, go. Vitels was killed after she traveled to New York City from Spain uh, to get the apartment ready to be occupied by a family friend. Um, it had been vacant for months after the death of her mother. Police sources say Vitels didn't know when she went to the apartment the two squatters had been living there. When she arrived, she could be seen on surveillance video coming and going from the apartment. Police believe the two squatters returned to the apartment after Vitels arrived, surprised, and killed her by beating her to death. 
Oh, How do oh, these squatters fuck? Are they Christ. on Zillow? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are they doing <laughs> to find these old places? They get a from someone. Someone figures out that there's an apartment that's empty. You Jeez. Know? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Wow, what a horrible death. Do they have the two suspects? Two suspects went to used car dealers after the the crash looking to buy a car. They remain at large. Jesus Christ. So they beat her to death, and they're at large. Video stealing her Lexus from the street out in front and fleeing. The car police said, sources said, was later involved in an accident in Pennsylvania. Well, they'll get them when they have to charge, when they charge the Lexus. (laughs) <laughs> that's not a they don't make electric cars oh sorry lexus is uh japanese is toyota uh, oh, toyota sorry. believes in hybrids oh toyota has a different strategy <laughs> for evs can they you be in can you imagine being a vicious murderer and getting away in a prius uh, yeah just, that's the car you want to take uh, people wouldn't unless you have too many stickers on the back they're like, oh, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. just a bunch of coexist <laughs> yeah stickers. then you're violent you're probably violent you're probably really aggressive uh-huh. about your insistence that everyone coexist Wow. Did you guys see that video that uh, um, Edward Snowden posted that shows uh, Israel bombing these kids? No. They're just walking in Gaza. Where? It's horrible, dude. It's Ugh. horrible because they're clearly not armed. Snowden? They're, they're just walking. The Edward, Snowden. Edward, yeah, Edward Snowden put it on his Twitter. And it's uh, these these young men are just walking Jesus. down the street. And mm. they, yeah. He's still in Russia, right? Yeah, he has to hide in Russia. So these guys are just walking down the street, mm. and this, they, you know, clearly not armed. This is like after the bombings and everything. These people are probably going back to see if their house is there. Who knows what the fuck they're doing, right? What if they thought they were squatters? Look at they Whoa, <laughs> that's Look at a this. hit. Look how quick it happens. Oh. Boom. So that guy in the front is running away. He's like, yeah. oh, shit. I got to get the fuck out of here. And so they zoom in on him. Stop running. Oh. oh. Yeah, they got bosses. him too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's fucking. And bro, horrible. the way they do it, I mean, there's nothing left of you. They're literally targeting you with a missile, and yeah, you just you just disappear. Look at that. Is it a missile or is it a, a drone? Uh, well, it's a missile coming from from a drone. A drone. Probably. Or it, I mean, it might be coming from somewhere else. Yeah, like I a don't plane. Know where. You know, I, I believe it's a drone, though. Isn't that what the the contention is? Pretty sure. Wow. Yeah. So they have drones that can do this, which is so insane, dude. And they're, they're not showing you the bodies because it's just a bloody mess. Well, you know what's so creepy? Have you seen those drone videos in Ukraine and Russia? And it's it's really good quality. And then they drop the little bomb on the guys. Mm-hmm. And then they put like Russian techno music over it. Yeah. <laughs> and like it, it's so creepy. It's so creepy. You just see guys hanging out. And then they just explode. Yeah. Well, that's what they say now is that they can see everything at all times. So it's really hard to like use like t- uh, tactics where like we'll sneak up on them on the, you know, and then yeah. we'll go this way. You know, they can't do that anymore. It's like those those kind of tactics are old now. They yeah, can't but what do you do? Satellites are everywhere. If Sat- you... Satellites are everywhere. Satellite. Drones are everywhere. Mm-hmm. They have silent drones. If you see a drone coming, see, are you just like, why well, accept so death? These guys think this tarp will help them, you know? Oh, Put a tarp leg. up. What's that? He got got. Just, just trying to zoom ahead here. The... Oh, so he'd already been shot? The... Oh, here it is. Ugh. Oh, my God, dude. It's pretty amazing what how they figured that out. Way to go. Just drop a bomb from a fucking drone and cook everybody. You, you should be able to hear it, right? If it's a if it's a civilian drone, because they make that loud, like that oh, buzz, and then it's pretty. It's like can maybe you shoot it down a hundred feet. Yeah, they have to shoot it down. They also have that like EMT blast on it, where they can basically take control of the or stop the signal, and it'll just land. It's like a perk in Call of Duty. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm sure they probably have ones that avoid that stuff now. Mm-hmm. I think th- th- they just keep getting these things better. That- how how silent are the drones now? Oh, did you hear about the drones that were hovering over the base that they think are from China? And uh, they had been hovering over there for weeks. I didn't read that one, but yeah, I, I heard. It's, They've it's, updated the balloons. It's a, uh, oh, whatchamacallit. What base was that again? Jim? I'll find it. I've got the story. Somebody sent it to me. I saved it. But it's, it's, it's a scary story because it says for weeks. Man, I, I, you know, I hate to jinx it, but it's just like, you know, these things you can just buy. And that the fact that, you know, luckily no people in this country have used it like 
like the way they're using it, we're really lucky. I mean, honestly, think about all the situations. Are we you know? lucky, or is it just a matter of time? Well, evidently, whatever they're teaching. doing is like you know. Just think of like New Year's Eve, yeah. all those different like gatherings. You know, oh, yeah. a game. You know, it could hey, be Dave, even like a high about school. Stop giving the enemy ideas. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude? I'm trying to connect to our you know what we call it, your <laughs> first base. your first responder <laughs> fan base, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your contractors and whatnot. But I'm sure that's a big uh, keeps them up at night thinking about that stuff. You know, dude, that fucking video is horrible. All those videos are horrible. horrible. The you, video of those guys in Gaza is horrible. Can we go back to sharks. How about <laughs> the? Well, I was going to say the the Ukrainians have those uh, those drones now the, that take out the ships. You know, the sea babies they call them. Look at which this. Which is just Myst mysterious drones swarmed Langley Air Force Base for weeks. For weeks. The unidentified drones were such an issue that assets were called in from around the government, including NASA WD WB fifty seven high altitude jet. Wow. So what does it say these things look like? Yeah. A dragon. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese dragon drone. That would be a dope way for China to show to really flex. Make a drone that looks like a dragon. Does it say what the description of these things were? That's the F-35. That's what I think a lot of this alien shit is. Uh, yeah, that's what they're saying now, too. A lot of it, I think, is drone technology that we don't, They won't admit to. We don't know that it's they It's out have. there. Yeah. Uh, to protect, protect operational security, we do not discuss impacts to operations. The statement said, we don't discuss our specific force protection measures, but retain the right to protect and the installation. Langley continues to monitor our airspace and work with local law enforcement and other federal agencies to ensure the safety of base personnel facilities Crazy. and assets. Does it say... So it says yeah, here that a UAS, uncrewed aerial system, the number <coughs> of UAS is fluctuated and they ranged in size and configuration. None mm. of the incursions appear to be exhibit hostile intent. But anything flying in our restricted airspace can pose a threat to flight safety. Interesting. Uncrewed aerial system. It could also test the reaction time. What you know, it's like a drone. Yeah, yeah, it must be. It must be a drone because that means they're not saying it's a UAP. Yeah, yeah. They Those think are it's ours. A drone. Drones, what is the most sophisticated drone currently available? But Google most sophisticated nuclear or most sophisticated um, military drone that we know of. I guess. Yeah, just Google that term. Most sophisticated military drone. A picture of Obama pops up. <laughs> the uh, they have the ones that are like little fighters now. They're like able to do turns that no human could take. Do they have little ones that buzz and have like machine guns on them? Look at this one. Well, that one's yeah. That's a spy. That's that cool. That, that can fly for dope. days. Okay, so here we got Dassault Neuron. That is cool. Look at these fucking things with the propeller in the back. Wow. They must be loud as shit, though, no? Mm -hmm. they, have a, they have a power plant in them. Uh, what? Well, I guess, I mean, it's, a, it's an engine, I guess. It means yeah. It. Rolls-Royce engine. Yeah, Shout cool. out to Rolls. <laughs> turbocharged piston <laughs> engine. That'd be loud, right? A turbocharged. Turbocharged piston engine? Yeah, that'd be loud. 450 horsepower. That's pretty fast for that little thing. It is cool. Yeah. You see the ones with uh, Ukraine with the boats, with it like uh, taking out the Russian Navy. That is pretty cool how they did that. Whoa, look at that thing. Look at the size That's of that. That's huge. Holy shit, I didn't know they were that big. Look at that. Wow. That's a crazy flying a robot that can murder you. How nutty is that? That's one of those things where it just like flies over. It's like every phone call, like immediately saps it up. But which one of these have missiles? So, so some of these must be just spies. Uh, that one does. Right? Yeah, well, those are the hellfires. I think. Yeah, then you gotta. You have to f make it so it can have missiles. I think they can probably do that to almost any of them. Look at the little one the guys has in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> can I play too? <laughs> I'm just annoying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess they wouldn't make one that couldn't shoot a missile, right? The little Why one just they? collects gossip. <laughs> <laughs> guess he's fucking <laughs> Look at that. The missiles just said, go back to that picture you just showed. Uh, shit, lost it. The one you just showed with the missiles in the bottom of it? Yeah, that's no. the classic. That's pretty wild. God damn. Awesome. 
So it's got two missiles, and what are those two things beside the missiles? Oh, Bombs. So. Rocket missiles. Those are two <laughs> different kinds. Wow. These can probably go really far. They might be guns. Might like, be defensive. Maybe. Right, to shut, like, flares and shit. Air to ground. Because they do that when someone's shooting a missile at them. They'll shoot off a flare to detract the heat-seeking missile. And then these are just the ones we know about because there's got to be some shit. Oh, yeah, of. for sure. Again, that's what I think a lot of that stuff is that people are reporting. These, uh, you think? These, yeah, that's what I think. I think a lot of these things that people are seeing that, that they think are a UFO is just some super sophisticated propulsion system. That some of them are keeping. really creepy, though, like the way they, they hover around or fly around, like the one they showed, like one or two from in the Middle East. Just like it did look like it was either a UFO or a monster or some kind of like <laughs> this one that looks like a, um, like a jellyfish, but it's flying around. It's got like stuff hanging yeah. off of it. Like, what is that? You know, that one's very weird because that one goes in the ocean. Too. That one, <laughs> that one's scary. <laughs> it goes into the ocean and then comes back. Remember, out. I told you last time we looked. I looked something up like this. This thing came out. In that is so cool. It says it's a drone and it goes underwater. And it goes underwater, what? but it never. I couldn't find anywhere that this thing was being sold. It was like had like a, a Kickstarter type program. Oh, from, neat. Like ten years ago. And right, one eye. But here's the problem with this. Even like pretending that that's real. Um, where? What's the propulsion system? That's the, it may have not ever been real and people were No, that. I don't think it's real. I think it's a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I mean, it is. I I'm, I'm really do. Like, yeah. look, at, look at how the bottom where it's screwed oh, down. Yeah. I think that's like a volleyball or a basketball or something. It, yeah, I think that's totally bullshit, fake. But. I think it's because there's no meth method of propulsion. Like, you can't just have a basketball that flies. Liquid well, gravity <laughs> engine, shut the fuck up. It says sphere shape, no outside propellers or moving parts, but then it doesn't say how it That's flies. Look at the golf ball. I don't, and there's no video yeah, of it. Exactly. Either. They use a golf ball as one of them. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> that thing's fake as fuck. It's got one there's eye. No, you, have to have a out, you have to have an exhaust. Mm -hmm. Every fucking propulsion system that we know of right now has to have either a fan, like a, you got to have a propeller, or you have to have an engine that shoots stuff out the back and makes you go forward. That's yeah. it. So these things that people keep seeing that don't operate like that, that's what makes me think the government has something that doesn't need a, a traditional combustion engine for a propulsion system. They're not going to have it on Google. Yeah, they're not right? going to tell you. They're not going to tell you shit. Yeah. They don't have mm -hmm. to tell you shit. I wouldn't tell them. I wouldn't tell the whole world what we could do. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I just make it better every year to mm -hmm. the point where it's basically a UFO. And if you just think about the unlimited amount of money that they've had, and they've been designing military vehicles and jet engines and fucking... They've been doing that for decades. Yeah. All that time, making one thing that no one knows about better and better and better and better, flying around Area 51. Mm. I bet there's a lot of those that the people are seeing. That they're like, oh my God, they were real. And they're like out and there they, in the desert just trying like, to communicate. Yeah, aliens are real. Yeah. But it's just us testing. But And also, I think aliens are real. I think mm. both I things. do too. Yeah. In what way? I'm, I'm hoping they are. I really am hoping they are real. I really do. He changed his tune quick. No, I didn't say, I didn't ever say that like, I didn't believe it. I think the things he was just talking about, I'm like, some of them are secret projects, some of them are aliens. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. That there is definitely another presence here, like in this world or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And that um, there, there has to be something to explain a lot of these sightings, which are not explainable. So, mm. it's, it's real likely that both things are true. Because mm. it just doesn't make any sense with the universe as big as it is that there's no one else out there. And if they do develop the ability to go way past where we are, yeah, they should be able to be invisible. That should be easy. True. They should be able to come here anytime they want. That should be easy. If you look at a, a, a species like ours like that's this intelligent as the human species, if we got one million years more advanced... One million years more advanced. Mm. Who the fuck knows what we can do? We're 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 gonna be weird in five years from now. Mm. Five years from now with AI, things are gonna be off the charts yeah. weird. So imagine that just keeps going for a million years, which is really possible. I mean, crocodiles have been around for fucking sixty-five million years or whatever. Yeah. It's p totally possible. Well, do you remember that cab driver in Vegas that told us that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy's very UFO. Uh, <laughs> what he he's got a lot of UFO stories, this guy. <laughs> he told it. What was the portal? One of the casinos was oh, a portal yeah. for aliens. <laughs> oh, it's got to be certain. He said there's a secret railway under, like, the MGM Grand, and that <laughs> oh. that's where aliens are coming from, Area 51. Yeah. It's like, I'd never even heard of this theory, and mm -hmm. it was like, no, it's true. Yeah. Oh, and, that's hilarious. And, uh, yeah, he had a lot he's of... He's like, um, there's no way... 
250 humans at one time would want to go to a casino. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was his wait, joke you, at the you end. You joking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was driving us or driving away from his ex-wife, but we were driving for a long time. <laughs> if I was going to be an alien, I want to abduct some people, though. I think Vegas would be a good spot. No one would him. miss them. Yeah? Not yep. only that, they'd be so confused. Like, I don't know what I think someone spiked my drink. Mm. All of a sudden, I yeah. was on an alien spaceship. Uh huh. And in Vegas, everything goes like there's always like a new thing to do. So that would definitely become like a, a like the sphere, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or imagine if there was a, like an abduction program, like you could actually get abducted. And instead of like abducting us and just ruining people's lives, what if we made a deal with the UFOs? Hey, listen, you guys got it all wrong. We're willing to get abducted. Yeah. Yeah. You can take us on board and do Test experiments us. on yeah. people. We don't care. <laughs> we'll, we're totally willing to be your guinea pig. Oh, influencers would try to do that. One hundred percent. Live streaming while oh, you're yeah. getting your anal probe. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, if they really wanted to come and abduct us, we would be more than willing to let them. You don't really have to force us. What if the aliens are is technology in terms of how advanced it's gotten in such a short period of time and then the people using it are just basically drones that are using this exposed technology well it's possible that that's the future of life the, the future of life is we integrate with technology mm. and that's the only way because like the biological evolutionary process is really slow Mm -hmm. But the technological evolutionary process is really fast, mm -hmm. like crazy fast. Like you can have a whole new thing in a year, whereas um, a, like a whole new species, like, God, how does yeah. that even happen? You know, how does that even happen? And then like when species are hybrids, they're not viable. So like some of them are and some of them aren't. And it's like, what? How long does it take to make a human out of a monkey? How long does it take to make a monkey out of an amoeba? It's too yeah. long. They don't have that time. Too <laughs> it's too long. That's too long. Yeah, speed but up. if you can integrate with technology, then you have an insane ability to adapt. Hmm. And then probably you just stop being a person. Probably will realize that. Well, I think once that's already out there. People stop being people. Well, you can't send a little bit. There's... We have a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know the whole send people to Mars. Like I was looking at, like how long it takes to get anywhere. Like it takes about six days, three days to get to the moon, which is doable. That's why the moon is the way to go. Mars is like nine months to a year. But then the other planets, let's say we're like in a in a whatever at our current like ability to like travel, like Jupiter, twenty five years, and there's really nothing there except for that Io moon, whatever that is. I'm hoping I'm not saying it wrong, but like the fact that like we're not built for outer space, and yet we keep craving this whole thing when you're right it should be some kind of techno hybrid of a human something yeah. that would be able to do that you know yeah and it'll probably if you become a machine yeah. instead of a person you don't have to worry about being crushed by gravity because you'll have a carbon fiber hull mm -hmm. and all your orgasms will happen from an app <laughs> and then you'll be able to radiation yeah. all that stuff that this because space is a killer you know it's like yeah, it's not if, built if for you're carbon that people. thing and you're taking 25 years to get to Jupiter. Well, the technology exists to make you not be bored. Like, what are you going to do for 25 years? They should put you to you're sleep. You're going to be playing video games the entire flight. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. You've been preparing you know for years. Six months of video games would go by on your trip to Mars. <laughs> It'll be so quick. You just have a local area network set up, and you and the other astronauts just fucking geeking out all day. Oh shit! They're coming for you. Guard your flank. Guard your flank. Ah! You fucking just drinking Mountain Dew. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Smiling. Yeah. If you knew that you didn't have any responsibilities other than playing video games, you know how quick six months could go by. Ah, oh, that sounds like hell, though. You know, not, Why, not for me. All the games. All the games. I mean, don't you want to get up and move around? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Is there Maybe a... if you just put that fucking Mark Zuckerberg headset on, you could pretend you're moving around. Is there a dick-sucking mm -hmm. robot that I could oh, use? Oh, definitely. Is that. Okay, I'm in. That's coming. <laughs> That's probably already here. Probably, they already have that in China. They're probably testing it out right now. The, uh, the uh, what is it called again? The, the it's a fembot or something. Which one's awesome that? It's powers. a sex doll, but it, it, it's whatever you have to, uh, I don't know. Those are coming. <laughs> Yeah. Those are coming. Oh, yeah. Have you seen that robot that like cooks and like sets up your kitchen for you? Uh -uh. The <laughs> robot like puts plates away and shit. They already I think have it's a... called a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a new AI powered chat GPT robot that does simple tasks around the kitchen. And but it communicates with you like a person even says um. 
It's very weird. Oh, no. like it's thinking. It goes, um, so the reason why I did that is I'm putting these plates away in this rack, and I'm, and, I'll, and they'll, you'll dump garbage on the on the table and say, please clean that up. Surely. And I just pick, look at this. Look why, at this. why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Oh, look that at it is cleaning so up. weird. Oh, look at that. What? Yeah. Great. It stands so, too. Based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? So it's Hello? analyzing the image. It's the slow right on now. The dishes table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Why does it Wait, sound like it's narrating this American life? <laughs> it's got a raspy voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a dude. Yeah. It is weird. Yeah, I, I that really looks like a puppet. It doesn't look like a robot. No, man. It, it does a lot of other things. That's as amazing. Well. Look at that this. is look truly how it amazing. Puts the dish into the drying rack. Does it apologize if it makes a mistake? <laughs> if it breaks your dick, yeah, <laughs> rips it right off. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. So, I applied too much force. <laughs> so, My bad. Will that eventually have like a skin covering, or will it look oh, like yeah, that? Oh yeah, 100. Pretty well. The apple found its new owner. The oh. trash is gone, oh. and the tableware is right where it belongs. I Look, call bullshit. You don't see that guy's face every time he talks. That guy is a ventriloquist. <laughs> that man is. That man is speaking for the. <laughs> oh, that's not compute. <laughs> what a cheap act, too. Hey, buddy. How about you get behind the table with him? Yeah, let's drink you a glass fucking, of water. Fucking fraud. <laughs> Show it dynamic walking. The dynamic walking one is wild. So this thing, by the way, it doesn't have to have that giant that metal amazing. plate over its chest, but it does if it doesn't want you to kill it. That's amazing. It looks bulletproof. You're going to have to shoot it in the lens. <laughs> but look at it walk around and move. Amazing. It's it's, that's amazing. And this is, think about like a Model T and then think about a Tesla. Okay? A Model T is this <laughs> slow, <laughs> chunky. Dork. Look at him. Look at his hips move. Sexy. That's crazy. Isn't that wild? But mm -hmm. think about a Model T, right? Model T's like big, stupid wooden wheels. <gasps> yeah. Oh I've my god. I've seen this. This is really it's nuts. Two years. Look at that. Yeah. This is <clears throat> That's almost amazing. two years ago that it could do this. It's a new American. Yeah. Look how warrior. agile it is. This is Boston Dynamics. More updates a year ago. And so they can do all kinds of things. They can they can fucking saw wood. They can do construction. <sighs> they can hop up on boxes. Look at this. This is before AI, right? So, <laughs> well, they had AI, but they but, yeah. didn't have AI available to everybody. Because like now, in the now. in the future, you'd look at something like this and go, like, this is probably yeah. not really happening. This is just AI is. A, this a, is real. I've seen. This I, is real. Yeah. They programmed yeah. it, look it how to it hop, jumps. They programmed it to hop around. Gay. That is amazing, and man. It, they programmed it to toss the stuff up to him. This is so much better than a lazy dock worker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some guy who doesn't like his job and needs a cigarette break. This fucking look at thing's that. ready to go. And if they figure out how to make, Whoa! oh, yo, it does Shit. acrobatics. <laughs> it's a gymnast. And if they figure out a way to make very small nuclear-powered engines, which I think they're Battery. already doing. Mm -hmm. I think there's, isn't there, a, is it China that has a small nuclear-powered power plant? Yes. So they'll be able to make a nuclear-powered power plant that's the size of a fucking cell phone and stuff it in that thing. It'll be able to go for 90 years. Holy I mean, shit, like a battery, like a, yeah. a nuclear battery. They already have that, which, where they use it to power. Like They used to do it for spacecraft, but you're right. Then it would be endless. Nuclear battery pr produces yeah. power for 50 years without needing to charge. That's crazy. Betavolt says its battery could power mobile phones that never need to be charged and drones that can fly forever. Forever. Would you really want a nuclear-powered phone, though? That's the one thing. Like, Fuck I yeah. Can't you would? Yeah, I want my <laughs> balls to glow. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, tired yeah. of charging That's one it. of those. I, I, I don't know about ball. that I'll, I'm version. willing to wear, like, an external case to put the phone in. It's like some sort of a shield from the... I'm sure the government wouldn't allow these companies to sell it if it was dangerous. So just... No. Yeah. Let's just let it get out there, and let's just uh, let's see let what the happens. pieces yeah. fall where they may. True. Don't be a pussy. Okay. Don't you want just a robot? Just accept. I like Don't the robot you thing, though. want a robot? We're going to get robot fuck dolls for shizzy. People oh, are yeah, so yeah. anti-robot already. They had the, um, what was that in San Francisco? The self, uh, self-driving self taxi. They lit it on oh, fire. I've seen that. They, it was like basically like, uh, you know, like the Amish people. It's <laughs> like the, you know, like they attacked it. They destroyed it. Yeah, but they do that to regular taxis know, but, in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, again, this is a sampling bias. You got homeless, crazy fentanyl <laughs> zombies. 
that are just trying to smash everything. People leave their fucking windows rolled down and their keys. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Like Bimping. in Canada, they're telling them to leave their keys outside their, uh, yep. their foyer. They tell them to leave your keys like near the door. Yeah. So that people don't have to like roam through your house no. if they're trying to steal your car. Yes. Really? Home yes. invasion. Jesus yes. Christ. They said, listen, to make it easier, just leave the keys outside. <laughs> like, what? How about it's a new low. stop yeah. people from stealing my fucking car? Yeah. What am I paying in taxes for, you fuckheads? It's like clean needle centers. Or like, if you're going to do the drugs, just no, do it no. in the clean, house. But clean needle centers are a lot more reasonable. I San like Francisco that kind of drug. reverses drone. plans to allow police robots to kill suspects. <laughs> you yeah. need it soon. <laughs> but this is how bad San Francisco's got. That This was a, a, a suggestion. Yep. And they actually have a robot. They're like, not yet, not yet. Let's wait till things go really sideways. Are they working on, like, technology for us to read thoughts? Oh, yeah. What about, like, Definitely. learning what our cats are thinking? Ooh. I want Let's that. low down on you the You don't want to know what your cats are thinking. <laughs> your cats are thinking, I wish you were small so I could eat you. Nuh-uh. Yeah, not my 100%. cat. They eat my you cat's gone. I love you. When you die, they eat you almost immediately. Good. I want really? to be one with my cat. Cool. Let's take a piss break, because I got a piss, too. Yeah. Let's pause this bitch right here. What the fuck time. are you doing, Dave? You're living <laughs> in 1995. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You know he sends me emails with no body and everything's in the subject? <laughs> <laughs> How long is the subject? It's so long. <laughs> That's, I, I forget to, to, those. to return, so it's yeah. all up there. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best. Listen so how about the great sound when I'm doing it, like this Morse is code? How long does this take for you to accomplish this? I'm done. <laughs> Set. So you don't have an iPhone at all anymore? I have one too, but this Not is me T9. off the grid. Yeah. This is my uh, uh, when shit happens. Right here, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. So what do you use that one for? Like, who do you text on that no, one? No, this one's like... Just like for all my texting, the other ones for emails and stuff. Wait a but minute, this is not on Wi-Fi. You text on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I text you, you text me on that. Yeah, I do. Can, that. Can't you feel it? The yeah. Old. That's why there's that like ten so spaces in between insane. words. <laughs> yeah. That is so insane. I'm sending you a text right now. I want to okay. see what happens. That is so insane. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it comes up green. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Just wait. Let. Wait for the sound, Dave. Are you texting or are you calling? I'm texting you. Tell me about your upcoming weekend at the mothership. <laughs> Might take a while. Yeah. <laughs> now, it doesn't have voice to text either, does it? No. He doesn't know. If it did, is. I wouldn't do that anyhow. Really? I'm like super paranoid with the web and everything. So this is like. This but is yeah, like, you have an iPhone. I do, but you know, that's uh, whatchamacallit, bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if I get it. Did you get it yet? I did. No. Okay. Wait, I didn't you get gonna it. Make the sound. Your name isn't. They always make sounds every time you text a button. It makes a sound. Yeah. And that doesn't uh -huh. drive you. It nuts? really annoys people too. Yeah. Wait, so it I takes you like in. four presses to get an S. Still, you're mm -hmm. doing that thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got to really yeah. want it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so nuts. I can't even find yeah. your thing yet. It'll take me days. Do you remember when people started using U, like the letter U, mm -hmm. instead yeah. of Y O U because of that? A yeah. time saver. Just a little time saver. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have emojis on it. Like any emoji is like he now still uses emoticons, mm -hmm. like a colon and a parenthesis. I use for, it sometimes too for a smiley face. Well. Are you, are you guys done with this tech beatdown? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm a tech hoarder. Come out of the house, buddy. Come on. We love you. How long have you been flip phone? I, I, I never. I have one in my house, which I'm sure is worth a lot of money because it has the antenna on it. Ooh. So that's like my retirement plan. I'm going to sell that to a museum or some collector or something <laughs> like that. But it's got that little like. And I'm like. Man, I can't believe like we actually used to think this did something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, I can't really hear you. Hold on Hold a second. On. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's up. Yeah. I can hear you too clear. Let me put it down just a little bit. I, wonder, I think it probably did a little something. They yeah, but you had one of these. Yeah. Actually, that reminds me of a story about you. Bill uh, Blumenreich, you know what he said to me? He goes, you know, back in the day, one of the comics who always worked was Joe. And you know why? I go, why? He goes... He had a cell phone before anybody else. So whenever there was a fallout, I would call Joe. Joe was there. Joe wanted it. And I was like, wow. So it was like a uh, like a cool story about like just as we went from like, you know, calling someone on a landline yeah. to like a cell phone and that you were ahead of the game. This is like 89. Easily. I had one in my car. Easily. No way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it was for the young comics. 
you know, having a car was a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, you needed a car to get around. Mm. If you didn't have a car, you you're not getting to gigs. You had you, a, you, you had to have someone drive you to gigs. Ugh. Yeah, that didn't happen. Because like I could get a call from Bloom right, like, hey, someone just got sick. That was it. It's yeah, like, that's what he's saying. In two hours, there's yeah. a gig in New Hampshire. Can you make it? I'm like, I'm on my way. That's awesome. And yeah, because you wanted it. Yeah, and he would tell me over the phone, okay, you're gonna take the 405 North. <laughs> like, you have yeah, to like write yeah. it down. So I had these pieces of paper that were like, you know. Know, uh, Dick's chuckle fuck and that, whatever, whatever the place was because Dick Darty had a bunch of them. Dick Darty had like the comedy hut and all these different comedies, the comedy vault. That's awesome. That Boston scene must have been like because you know, talk about New York, like you know, starting out. I always felt like there was definitely more rooms, like more open mics and stuff like that. But Boston, like you kind of like there were there were paying gigs if you could do them, you know, if yeah. you could headline. And there were so many local great headliners that like you really like swimming with sharks basically. Mm -hmm. I mean it was like so many guys that could just like basically, you know, knock blow you off the stage at any minute, you know. And they would do it to people on purpose. They did it to me. I know that. With it at Nick's really they do it at um, Nick's they would just come like the Hooky Lao or something mm -hmm. like that. Like you don't mind if I do a little time and it was like forty minutes of solid, you know, every every Boston thing they could throw yes. at me. And then I'm up there with my, like, you know, you know, little people jokes. <laughs> 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 to be polite. <laughs> hey, you guys, uh, <laughs> leprechauns, <laughs> nothing. Uh, you know, go home. You know, screaming at you. They did it on purpose to people. They oh, would, for sure. Wow. Would, uh, and we deserved it, too, by the way. Well, they had an attitude about the rest of the world when it came to comedy. They felt like the best comics were in Boston, but they all stayed in Boston. And whenever guys would come out of, from out of town that were like headliners, like national headliners, they would yep. roast that guy. Oh, for sure. They would throw him after Don Gavin and Steve Sweeney and Kevin Knox and fuck. It, it was, was it was such a wake up. I, but even the Lenny crowds Clark. themselves, like very, you know, um, very like. You know, you better prove it. Oh yeah, to be up there. If you're the closer, you better be the best guy here. You know. Also, there were so many fucking headliners that they were just so used to a very high level of headliner. Yep. These guys were killers. You just pull out a comb to do your fucking mustache. Yes, I was hoping you <laughs> were making eye contact with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to make sure everything's in order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's in order. Yeah. How often do you comb your mustache? A fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I feel the need. <laughs> a fair amount. Do you have a specific mustache comb or just use any old I just get one from comb. Walgreens or whatever. I've yeah. seen them little tiny ones. They have little tiny mustache I don't like them. The, the teeth are too sharp and it hurts uh, my little face. That makes sense. Yeah. You get a nice soft plastic one. Oh, yeah. 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 Like old school ones. You got to. Sometimes shit gets in there, you know? Mm, Trimmed it yeah. up today. Don't want any loose hairs. I get yeah. it. I get it. Before I was bald, I used to enjoy running a comb through my head. It's a nice yes. little scalp massage. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Ah, now I'm afraid my hair will fall good. out, so I can't do it. <laughs> Looking at the demise in your I know. comb. Yeah. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. Mm hmm I started going bald when I was like 18. Really? Crazy, yeah. What was that like? Lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is a kid in my high school that was going bald at 15, and everybody called him Baldy. Oh, God. That was his nickname, Baldy. That's horrific. <laughs> Kids were brutal back they then. They were. Oh, they yeah. were fucking brutal in the 80s. They were, they were brutal. brutal in the '90s and 2000s. They're brutal right now. Yeah, they're, they're be yeah. beyond brutal. I think now yeah. this is just heartless what they're doing. You know. Yeah. That's like um, I don't know, but we didn't have that web to like you know everything it does. Accentuate everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also like get the clicks every mm -hmm. time oh, someone's yeah. getting their ass kicked. Someone's filming it. Thank God that didn't exist. <sighs> My yeah. God, imagine mm -hmm. how many dick pics you'd have out there in the world. Ooh. Ooh. Be in trouble. Yeah, these kids today. Yeah, <laughs> these kids today. Teachers and students. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's wild. Teachers always fuck students. There was always like teachers fucking students. Mm hmm. Yeah, but we didn't find out about it till later. Like, did you hear so and so yeah. used to fuck Mister Blah Blah? There was always the like very advanced senior who was yeah. banging mm -hmm. the Spanish teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> rolling his R's. It is funny. Like that's like professors and universities. That was kind of understood. That was part of the gig. That was yeah. Why well, yeah. you did? I used to be a teacher, and they're like never ever be in a room with the door shut mm. you leave the door open all the time and right. you're never alone with anyone i was like yeah this is fucking nuts yeah and i see some of the shit with what teachers share on the internet with them and like students i'm like this is such a violation of boundaries mm -hmm. it's crazy 
What do you, uh, you know, the homeschooling seems way better now. Like, I was like, well, those uh, teachers they, fuck their kids too. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a better option for everything. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, it's always like, hey, homeschool, you must be weird now. It's like, I guess you're just being safe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want your kid indoctrinated either. Mm. Mm. What do you think of uh, college now? Do you think it's a waste of time? Yes. Well, it's a player, it clearly depends on what you want to do. If you want to be a computer coder, good fucking luck. Mm. AI is going to take over all that. Oh, yeah. There's, there's so many jobs that are gonna vanish That's over the next true. five years. But it's also like, it's a, such a rude, cruel thing to do to an 18 year old kid that has no fucking idea what they want to do for their life. Yes! And you force them into debt. Decide now. And you force them into a debt that's insanely difficult to get out of. Mm. It's way harder than just getting going bankrupt. It's, it's hard to get out of that debt. You're well, fucked. I, I got in trouble when I was teaching because I told all my students, I'm like, take the test to go to school, but pick up a trade. Go to trade school and start making money. That's like the smart thing to do. Well, if that's what you want to do. But, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do with your life. Yeah, like somebody you wants to be a journalist, you, you should do. probably go to school. Yeah, but if you don't know what you want to today. do, what, what yeah. should you do? You know, I guess that's what it is. It's go like, out and get a job and know you can always go to college later, you know? Yeah, yeah. but you won't. Yeah, Not no, when you're working. Peer pressure. And, yeah. you know, also, your family's pressure. On when you, oh, yeah, for When sure. you're young, like, you have that window where you can kind of, like, take wild chances mm -hmm. from, like, 18 to, like, 24, 25. Then once you're, like, 25, everybody's like, hey, get your fucking oh, shit yeah. together. You know, maybe even earlier than that if you're in the Northeast. But if you are... You know, already in a job and you're working eight hours a day, you're fucking tired. The the odds that you're going to quit that and stop making money yeah. and go to school, those aren't so high. I think it's harder on, um, you know, not to be the old guy, but like I, this generation is taught that they're ex exceptional and mm -hmm. that everything they do is like important. Whereas I think when I was growing up, it was like, no, nothing you do is really that important and that you're also going to have to like kind of work your way up in something. I think a lot of them see their peers like you know they went to college they dropped out they started a company or you know they're an influencer with a million followers so they see success differently than we do and like for me it was like yeah you gotta like kind of work your way up or like you know mm -hmm. it's really about how much you want it you know that kind of thing whereas now i think i feel like there's there really is no game plan it's really you know it's kind of like you know you're almost like a sucker if you kind of play the game you know also fame is like much more attainable yeah. to regular people now than ever before. Yeah. You know, especially if you're willing to do stupid things like pull pranks on people mm -hmm. or, you know, there's right. so many different things that people can do now that can get them attention. Yeah. And they're they're doing that as a source of a career. Yeah, but why as a as a teacher, how can you make your kids do work when they're like, "No, nah, I'm just going to be a YouTuber. I have more followers than you." Like, shut up. Well, but, but the whole idea of fame is like when I was growing up it's like you don't want to be famous. That's like for, you know, like whatever. That's mm -hmm. like, that's not cool. You know, you want to be, you know, something like rough. You know, you want to be like a, what, like a lumberjack or something, you know? <laughs> like now these kids, even at young ages, they're like, fame is where it's at. That's where you get everything you want. People actually listen to you and they, um, you know, give you everything you want. So it's like amazing. They've never worked a day in their life yet. They already know they don't want to work. You know, Dude, I, I saw the creepiest thing. My friend's daughter took her phone and recorded her five years old and into the camera she just kept going don't forget to like and subscribe don't oh, forget to creepy. like and subscribe that's weird. watch my videos don't forget to like and i was like dude this is that's an alien that also, kid's being trained to be an alien not the kid's choice and you're exposing the kid to the world yeah the whole world it's it's dangerous it's not smart it's stupid it's mm -hmm. irresponsible yeah well, just like that, that video we watched with the drone, like, psychically, we're not supposed to see that. Well, but, you're definitely not supposed to see people get blown to pieces Well, yeah, but even, even just like now, that. like, we, yes, these things happen, but we shouldn't be aware of it and inundated with it every single day and every single second. Right, but that's the only way you find out about it, to put pressure on people to stop it. Because if it doesn't leak, like Edward Snowden doesn't put it out there and a bunch of people don't retweet it and get outraged by it, then it doesn't put pressure on the politicians. But is that going to stop pressure. it? Are they going to yeah, stop? Yeah, stuff, stuff like that can change things. Yeah. Stuff like that changes people's minds. Stuff yeah. like that changes people's understanding of what's actually going on. Because mm -hmm. you keep hearing, oh, no, it's the people that are dying. It's only Hamas sh uses human shields. Mm -hmm. Well, clearly that was not a human shield. Yeah. And clearly those people weren't endangering anybody and they didn't look like they were armed and but they just blew them apart do you think the people making money off of this like do you think they really even care they're gonna keep going they're right? gonna care because the people are gonna care because there's massive public outrage from things like this 
And the more things like this happen, the less support you get for military budgets. Mm -hmm. And then you put pressure on the politicians that are voting for these things. And then, you know, all that stuff works. It really does have an impact because the, they don't want people to be so outraged that they revolt. They don't want people to pull a Bud Light on the whole government. Yeah. You know, because people are trying to figure out a way to do that. There's a lot of people that are trying to figure out a way to, like, put a stop to all this shit. So the more things like this come up, it's fuel for those people. Yeah, but the majority of people don't digest news like we do in like a you know endless cycle you know and like have time to really kind of think about it because i think that um the a lot of people i know of like they're really smart people they just turn the news off they want rather live in their own bubble that the news really makes them anxious and really makes them and i'm like well you got to know what's going on in the world right and then they kind of hit you with that whole thing of like you know they're telling you different like you know everyone has a narrative and all that kind of story but i'm also like you know living in your own world is not the way to go either because like when you do have to venture out of that bubble it's it's terrifying i think you know? especially like if you don't know what's going on mm -hmm. right you know, if you don't like there's some new thing that's happening some new crisis that's happening, you don't know and you just walk right into it i mean yeah, yeah it's like as, as like uh you know i'm like curious like I'm, I'm just like i'd like to see all sides of something but not to make it political or anything like that I, I think a lot of these people just decide to like you know what it's not for me i'd rather kind of like work on my own you know some of its mental health if just a lot of this stuff really shakes people to the core when they finally have to deal with it so you know i i, I that's the reason why like board games are still around because people love the idea that you can disconnect from the world and like you're in like your own little world where you get to be god and here's the rules of it and stuff like that so you know there's something to that puzzles you know that's why Hello? You, know, you guys don't believe to me? You don't believe you're a me? shill for Milton Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, for sure. People like puzzles. No, people people want to disconnect. That's like yeah. we're in that business. People want to sure. get a, get away from their problems, you know? Fuck yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and I think people deserve to. 100%. But that's... also, like, if you're poor and you're barely making ends meet, like, you don't have time to worry about what's going on over here. Like, sure, you can be informed, but it's so hard to be informed and not let it take a toll on you. Well, that's why the great luxury is the people that go, please don't do that. Um, no, I wanted to see if your message came. <laughs> the, the great luxury, I thought he was gonna text somebody with that fucking goofy thing. The great luxury do of uh, <laughs> like rich privileged kids is becoming an activist. Yeah, like, that's, that's right. Those yeah. are the ones that are splashing paint Mm -hmm. on, on the Mona Lisa and gluing themselves to walls. Yeah. Those are all kids from privileged backgrounds who feel guilty and they have this insane view that you're just going to stop oil now and the way to do it is to glue yourself to them the mona lisa <laughs> but that's been going around since Fucking you know the dipshits. 70s there was a lot of rich kids that were involved <laughs> of course yeah. it's always rich kids yeah. yeah because those are the kids that have the luxury of being able to go out and protest and do well, stuff i think like it's this. like inherent guilt too oh, of yeah. like god i feel so bad what can i do 100 percent, especially today today yeah. you're being told that just by virtue of the color of your skin you're a colonizer yeah you're you're responsible for everything and mm -hmm. there's people like some of these people that are in these uh, protests, they haven't thought shit out at all. No. So they get confronted by uh, influencers, right? And they ask them like real simple questions to get them riled up. Like, what do you think we should do? We need to like get rid of this yeah. country. Capitalism. We're you don't understand. We're yeah. trying to dissolve the country. Dis get That's away from the capitals. Get yep. away from the capital. Like, yeah. what? Dude, I saw the best thing. I, w I went to a uh, rally or like a, no, a, a protest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was, it was during the summer of 2020 and you know, everyone's like marching and everything. And I wanted to go check it out. And uh, this this girl was uh, wearing like an ACAB shirt and chanting like, NYPD, racist police. And a cop was like, excuse me, miss, you can't stand here. And she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then like <laughs> shifted and then started protesting again. She lost like, all her cred. You fucking the street cred. faker. Yep. What the fuck? Sure that wasn't a skit? <laughs> That sounds like a skit. I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, it must be real. Yeah. There's no way it could be fake. Yes. It was not fake. Oh, you was saw it. it. You it was right. It. No, I was you there, right there. Next oh, to me. I'm next sorry. to me. That wasn't a crisis so. actor? Because that no. sounds like, if I saw that one on, on Instagram, I'd be like, come on. Oh, no, no, no. I was there. Like, oh, it happened right crazy. next to me, and I, I was with my buddy, and we just started laughing. How dumb is that? Yeah. And then I, I, was, I was in Central Park for one. And I swear to God, this guy had a sign, and this super hot fucking girl went up to him and goes, can I borrow your sign? Grabbed it, turned around, took a picture, gave it back, and left. Yeah. 
<laughs> a yeah. model. It was stolen. Imagine Valor. Being a young guy just tr trying to trust anything today. Oh, <laughs> anything. Especially hot pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. what about why are you always at these protests yet you're not in them? Is that like the guy who goes to see the fires? I'm like a you like to like a wannabe fireman? Like I like to just I am go a wannabe see fireman. <laughs> I love yeah. firefighters. Good job, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you used a Halligan bar? Good work, fellas. <laughs> oh yeah, you're like a, you know the stats. Oh yeah. I was a volunteer firefighter in high school. I loved it. Were you really? In yeah. high school? Yeah, before 9 11. Wow. Yeah. If you're not <laughs> fighting fires, it's a great gig. <laughs> What? If you're not fighting fires, it's a great gig to be a fireman. Yeah, but you don't have to fight the fires. Right. You don't have to like, oh, risk yeah. your life and go into a burning building. Well, you I was, you're I, in the firehouse, you're watching movies, yeah, you're making yeah. work dinner. I was always in the cooking. pool room playing pool so I could slide down the pole. There you go, And everybody bro. beat me running down the stairs, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I did it uh, from like 15, 16 or whatever to, to 18, and I was a junior firefighter, so I wasn't allowed to fight fires in the interior i could just do it from the exterior mm. and then we would go we were like the bitches we had to go and clean everything up and clean the trucks and then i i fought a car fire once at 2 a.m because i live close to the house and you could hear the sirens so i showed up and it was me and two other guys it was all volunteer and they let me fight the fire myself and i was so nervous i didn't strap my helmet on and i like pop the hood my helmet falls off and the, and i left the hose running it was like a it was like wow. a charlie chaplin world, movie world it was hardest catch oh it was hard it was so <laughs> embarrassing they're just in the truck laughing I'm like I'm sorry fellas uh, that's yeah. one of my fears the car fire I mean that's a horrible death. What, being right? in it? Yeah. Oh no, it was a yeah. No, being in car. it. Yeah. I thought you were just watching. One of the, one of the worst. No, watching ones it is cool, but <laughs> one of the worst ones I've ever heard is Northern California. The wildfires. It, it yes. just swarmed the highway. Oh yeah. Killed everybody in their cars. Oh. Trapped bumper to bumper. Can't get away. That's like hell on earth when they have the family driving, like trying to drive to safety, mm -hmm. and you just see all that sparks and all oh. that stuff coming. Fuck, man. Uh, dude, I've been evacuated three times living in California. No shit. Yeah, fire burned two houses in front of my house. Yeah. And what do you ground. do? Like, are you out there with a hole? Like, are you, like, what? what's the we move? We got the fuck you out You got out, there. right? Yeah, I'm what do not, you grab? Nothing. Grab the laptop. Grab the laptop and some clothes. I'm like, can get everything else. Fuck, and, fuck this place. And do they have a... Do Stay they have, alive. You you, see, that's what it's like, man. When yeah. you see it, when you see, like... Everything over the horizon is fire. Yeah, I mean from the left to the right everything coming over the hills is fire That's crazy, and it's just engulfing buildings. You're seeing your neighbor's house on fire Jesus. You just get the fuck out while you can and what I have another so they just did Supposedly they have enough rain now for like till 2025 in California mm -hmm. that they're saying like this should help, like uh, both uh, the consumption and also with all that snow up in the in Northern California. That it should like, be, like if, if there's a forest fire now, what is that? Like, well, what see, happened? this doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you, if you have a, a wildfire like they had, where those people died on the highway. Those things are so big, you can't even comprehend it. It's mm. it's so hot. There's so much fire. It's literally thousands and thousands of acres around you are just engulfed in flames. And it's moving at like twenty miles an hour. Oh shit! Like you, Jesus you ain't. There's nothing happening that you're gonna do with water. Okay. The and the other problem with getting a lot of rainfall is you get a lot of growth. So you get a lot of grasses, wild grasses grow, mm. and they they're very tall, and then they dry out because it stops raining. Right. Like it always fucking does, and everything turns brown. And as soon as things get hot and everything turns brown and it stops raining, that's when fire season happens. And it's a lot of it is fucking idiots throwing cigarettes out the window. Sorry. A lot of it is people that are camping, homeless people. Start and fires. gender reveals. Gender. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have, right. fire, like, they have <laughs> the fireworks at the gender reveal. Yeah, yeah. Everybody loses their house. <laughs> how about how about like uh, those guys, the smoke jumpers, whatever the people that do that? That's a balls gig. But they didn't have that in Hawaii. They had nothing like that there. Like when that um, town went up, you know, yeah. it was all made of bamboo. I mean, it was oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, you mean in Maui? In Maui, the yeah. Maui thing's crazy. Yeah. Because the that, Maui was power lines downed. Oh, that's power what it was. Lines. And but wasn't then, response time terrible, too? It was non-existent. Yeah. They never had anything like that happen there. Yeah, but it, there was also a lot of problems. Like, the people didn't want to release the water because, the, the, like, the water is owned. Like, there's water rights. And I think oh, the wow. water was going to the rich neighborhoods where the golf courses are. And wow. So there's, like, Fucking trying to get class. the water. And then there's yeah. also, like, how the fuck do you have a place that's this windy where you still have exposed power lines? 
That seems insane. Man. That seems insane. Like, every time those things fall down and you didn't clean up any of the brush around it. Wasn't and... the conspiracy that they were trying to get it out of there so they could sell the land? Yes. The crazy conspiracy is the direct energy weapons conspiracy. People what? think those fires. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, is yeah, this? Yeah. Bro, the, the, the real tinfoil hat dudes, they'll, they'll corner you. Like, the, what do you think about the direct energy weapon in, in Maui? Was that like a heart like, attack gun for fires? It's There's apparently... The government has the ability, according to the conspiracy theorists of, uh, and, and and maybe even some real people, the, of having these things that they call direct energy weapons. So it's almost like a laser beam. Mm -hmm. And I know that these are things that they're working on. I know these are things that are probably top secret because it's it's always been discussed. Mm -hmm. There's been studies on how to do it, and like, there's been papers written on it. So the conspiracy theory is that they lit those houses on fire on purpose with direct energy weapons. And if you had a blue house, like a, with a blue ceiling, that the blue ceiling would somehow reflect against this energy weapon and stop your house from burning. No it's, way. Oh, yeah. Not only that, but they use because <laughs> Biden did some speech and in his, you know, old kind of senile way, he was talking about how some houses survived because they had the right roof. And everybody's like, see, it's the blue roof. <laughs> That's no all it takes. So, yeah, so conspiracy theorists like literally painting their roofs blue to protect them from direct <laughs> energy weapons. Jamie, please Google this. No way. By the way, this might have been one of those things that 4chan started for a fuck, uh -huh. just for, for goofing with <laughs> yeah, people, yeah. and then people ran with it. Who knows? Or it might be just people that are out of their Can you imagine minds. your house burning up because like your wife or partner was like, no, don't paint it blue. Operation green. green Roof. That's a thing, but it's no not way. A part of the cons the conspiracy thing. That what does confused. that mean? What is Operation One Operation post Blue on Roof X. is a thing about getting people blue tarps to cover their roofs. That's not the same thing as what. Oh, the tent Allegedly. Cities. Sure. Allegedly, but the um the the th okay social media post sharing <laughs> the post typically include a video from a TikTok account that often shares clips of everyday items being burned by a hand. Handheld industrial laser in a workshop. The clip shows a laser burning yellow, red, and green fabric while a blue swatch is unscathed, with text saying it can be programmed for different wavelengths. Wow. So some lasers don't work on blue ceilings, and these people think that it's the, the blue roof Did that'll you protect see? you. Someone said everything that's blue survived, including t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> a blue car and some blue beach umbrellas around Front Street along the waterfront were not destroyed in the inferno. And the Blue Man Group. They were playing in town. <laughs> they were doing a road gig. That is that is really stretching it, if you ask me. Yeah, they're going hard on this. This is too much. DEW stands for Direct Energy Weapons, which use technology like high-energy lasers instead of projectiles like bullets. But these videos are not evidence that they have anything to do with the wildfires. To start with, they show... What is the videos they're saying? Handful of blue items in the fire's aftermath. But uh, other footage and photos show these were hardly the only things left standing. So, But the thing about the the direct energy weapon is there videos of those things being used like is there like a, a is a direct energy weapon a real thing like 100 percent? yeah so when you i mean yeah, so that's different. i think it's true it's, it's like what you said lasers the mm. so there's like videos of the u.s government talking about direct energy weapons yeah and you know very broad terms it's only like 15 bucks a shot but they don't <laughs> it's true <laughs> No, they really? were saying that this will be the best way to like shoot down missiles and drones. High energy lasers and high powered microwaves. Oh, Boom. so they just shot that thing? Nice. Almost looks like the drone video. Nice. So they just shot that out of the sky? But it's coming from a boat onto a boat. That's I don't know how oh. it works. Now. And so what is it? <laughs> look at look? that guy just <laughs> lovely <laughs> typing. <laughs> typing like, isn't it racist to use an Asian guy? <laughs> That'd be an airborne ranger. But the computer guy, we only let Asians handle it. <laughs> the Navy. Is, the DEI guy. Does it show, what is that video at the bottom? Why the U.S. military is investing billions it's a ten minute in direct energy? Uh, well, not yeah. Right there. I guarantee they're That's doing cool. it because they know how to do it. But when, by the time they're telling you they're investing billions, they probably already invested billions. Sure. They probably figure um, out. There was a video. Oh, it's not. Video claiming. Hold on. Ah. There Claiming to show a directed energy weapon is actually an edited clip of an explosion in Russia. That's not what I was trying to pull up. Though. Man, this stuff uh, is. There was a, a video of uh, what looked like a laser coming out of the sky. Uh. Yeah, I saw that. And like during a storm or Somebody something. Somebody like explained that. that that's that's cell phone video cameras like glitching under the intense exposure of like a lightning bolt. 
Oh. You know, like it's something that light flashes and it creates like a distortion in some cell phones. I don't know if that's true though. That was just so it's a natural. Someone had. It's a natural thing. It's not. Would that look like? Show that again. I don't know what I was even looking at. That's that lady, to... that video that you just showed. No, I know, but I, I'm trying to. I don't know what the hell they're showing because I can't hear the sound. It's showing all sorts of stuff they're talking about. Whoa. Just mm -hmm. images that were going viral during it. Some of them are real. Some of them are not. Look at her smiling. See, like right there, for instance, pause. That's a controlled burn at a Canton refinery in Ohio. And because of that light going to the sky, right. someone thinks it's a laser. Everybody thinks it's, it's a laser. It's a rainbow. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Oh, that's what is cool. that one? SpaceX launch. Oh, that's interesting that people are doing that. But, but that's people. Some people are out of their fucking minds. There's a thing yeah. that happened though on Twitter too. I like. I feel like this doesn't get talked about sometimes. People are trying to get engagement money because if you build up an account that can get engagement, doesn't matter if it's good engagement, bad engagement. You just got to get the numbers. You can start getting revenue. So people are reposting real old viral videos, mm -hmm. confusing people with shit posts right, like this, right, right, just to build up the five million views. So but here's liars. the real here's the real conspiracy about the fires. Like they haven't done any rebuilding. Um, those mm. people, they weren't allowed to have insurance inspectors go in there. I don't know if they can now. Um, that people still had to pay their mortgage on those things. Oh, jeez. And the thing the is, worst. it's like, if you're getting to this point where you don't have anything, and you're, you, you can't rebuild your house, and you're fucked, and then they come along and offer you a payment or something, or you get foreclosed on because you haven't paid your mortgage, mm -hmm. and then the banks own it. And then whoever the fuck is the developer owns mm -hmm. it. And then whatever they want to do for the better good of Maui, they build there. And then these people lose everything. This is what's really scary about it. It's because, like, the way it's being handled is not like you're handling victims of a natural disaster that's horrific and took more lives than any wildfire in the history of this country. You're doing it like you are trying to figure out a way to take that from those people. Yeah. You're not doing it like you're trying to support those people and, and build it back. You're, you're doing it like if you know what's really going on, you're not asking for financial aid for these people to deal with their mortgages, and you're not asking for aid from the government in one of those giant Ukraine bills. It would take $5 billion, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that what the money was? $5 billion to rebuild all those houses? That That's a drop in the bucket that's to nothing. what they're spending mm -hmm. yeah. in Ukraine. Yeah. And there's no consideration at all to do something for these fucking people? That seems like you don't want... To do anything they well, they declared an emergency i know when it happened like a um uh federal like that usually means they can activate all federal funds and well those people got a one-time payment of 700 bucks Jesus that's, that's a one-time payment didn't it's we get outrage. more for stimulus checks yeah that's an outrage then. yeah dude well well fucking fema when hurricane katrina hit i i went down to help like clean up and rebuild homes and stuff and they sent us to foley alabama because they still didn't get relief from Hurricane Ivan like years prior. Wow. Jeez. So there were still homes with roofs blown off from Hurricane Ivan. Jeez. So did they tell them we're going to send down some high school firemen? <laughs> 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 don't don't hang up the phone. We're sending some kids. Don't let them they, go to your strip club. They're yeah. not popular yeah. in high school, no, but they no, want to be no. firemen. <laughs> <laughs> they have all the weekend open. They don't have dates or friends. Hello, fellas, I'm here to help. <laughs> Hi. Anybody got a shovel for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what I like. Uh, I know a guy who just took the MTA test, um, and now he's an MTA guy. You know, that's really? the guy who drives the trains in in the subways. Yeah. So I'm like, I wonder what kind of training they give them now, because it's more than just driving a train. It's got to be like, you know, you got to make a choice now. Yeah. All right. Learn more. Do you time. pull to the station or do you hit the hit the homeless man who's on the tracks? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do? You know, like all kinds of hypotheticals. Yeah. How many times do homeless people get got down there? There's so much going well, on in that station, <laughs> like. Not, not even homeless people. How many people get pushed, pushed. by homeless yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Someone was pushed. Wild. She had both of her feet um, yeah. amputated, oh cut right God. off. Oh, the I videos mean, are the best because the people videotaping it aren't upset about the loss of human life. They're upset because they're late to they're work. They're late, yeah. <laughs> they're like, I got somewhere to be. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. yeah. So crazy. The, yeah. the pushing people onto the tracks things is fucking terrifying. I think that's new, if you ask me. That's yeah. something that's only the last couple of years. Maybe but also it's just so scary because it's random. At like 8 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. at a popular station, yeah. you know, 3.30 on the work commute. And mm -hmm. you, do you know how much that's going to ramp up with 
people coming in from everywhere around the world and not having any jobs that were promised to them and being angry at everybody and knowing they can get away with crime and already being a oh, murderer, sure. already committing murder in your country and you got away with it. And now here you are in America. And, and also you're doing fentanyl. Multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw that on there. Yeah. Just that. <laughs> and multiple people that are doing the pushings have been locked up so many times in their family like this yeah. person is sick yeah we've yeah. tried we've dropped them off at a hospital and they keep getting released we don't know what to do but what can you do really but what what can't the government use do? one of how those lasers how come they don't <laughs> i mean this was after the reagan administration they, they yeah let they all the nutty people mm -hmm. out the street well, Geraldo Rivera was the guy who took that, um, you know, he did that documentary on Creed. What, what was it? Like, it was this... Al Capone's vault? It, no, but it was, like, it was like one of those, but he went to, uh, like, um, uh, an asylum, an asylum, and he just saw people laying in their own filth and just how horrible it yeah. was. And that was the beginning of the, uh, basically, the defund these psychiatric hospitals, where they, through medication, they were allowed to release them into society again. And that's where people are now, like, we really could use an asylum right now. We need to right open now. them yeah. up and then incentivize workers with high pay to have smart people with compassion working there, not just bottom of the barrel that's a tough. That yeah, that's right. The Willowbrook. Yeah, oh, this is yeah. really. Oh, this God. is talk about something that's hard to watch. Is this thing here, man? Landmark investigation of Staten Island's Willowbrook State School, an institution for the developmentally disabled. It's terrible. His expose forever changed the face of mental health. Ugh. My alma mater. But that's the fucking horrible thing about people when they can get away with doing things when no one's like a mm. Rolo Rivera or somebody else is like. It's breathing down their neck trying to find out what the fuck is going on. That's institutionalized, yep. Ugh. But that's what people did back then. They Ugh, put them in these forever. places, get them off the streets, mm -hmm. Yeah. you know? And, uh, and now no people are looking at them. it going like, you know, maybe that's a good idea, you know? I used to work at a, at a sober living house, and one of the kids was, like, severely autistic, and his family would just send him to different rehabs and sober living houses because he was so difficult to deal with and would just say he had a problem with marijuana. And then the kid learned how to smoke crack from people in the houses. Yeah. And he ended up dying in a crack house. It's like the saddest thing ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know if that's the saddest thing ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> this poor kid. Was that sadder than those guys getting drone bombed? Well, it's... it's <laughs> Imagine it's, being it's... living in Gaza. You're just fucked. You're just sure you're fucked. Yeah. And you're just like going, oh, my God, let's walk back and see if there's anything there. Yeah, but and imagine... the Israeli army is targeting you. Yeah, but, but imagine going to a crack house thinking you're going to color with some guy and he ends up <laughs> killing you. Yeah, that's not good either. <laughs> I don't know if it's the saddest thing. It's yeah. definitely sad. It's it's parallel sad. But the sober living right? house, like, oh, what? How does sad. that work? It's all sad. Yeah. What do you mean? I, I've only seen it on that show of the, um, you know, with Doctor Drew, the sober living house. Like, what is it oh. like? Have you lived in one? Yeah. What's it like? Like, you have chores and you know. Well, I lived in a three quarter house, an Oxford house in Delaware. Yeah. And so it was self-run. So we had we had um, everyone had a role, like a comptroller, a treasurer, a chore coordinator, a president of the house, and we kept each other accountable. But uh, sober living house, like a halfway house, you have house managers and nah. clinical assistants and everything that basically like babysit you and take you. And you have to have to a job besides working there, right? Living there, you have to have a job outside yeah, you, of the house. Yeah, you help them get jobs and everything. Okay. And then I. Was, I like that idea. Yeah, I mean, and then I got like fired that. for drinking, so uh, <laughs> it didn't end well. <laughs> That's like the first first rule. Yeah, You're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I didn't oh, read right. the handbook. <laughs> oh, right. Do they can't. give you a warning, or is this one time? Oh, out. Out. Yeah. Out. And I, they didn't catch me. I came to them and was like, I fucked up. I was on the road, and I took a two-week bender, and it was bad. And I came back and got fired. Wow. Wow. So were you clean when you came back? To the house? Yeah. Uh, or were you still a little drunk? No, I I mean like I hadn't drank yet that day, but I left the and day got before. cocked. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So did you just stand in your? Once you were fired, did you just get in your car and get reloaded in front of the house? <laughs> hey, I love God. that expression. <laughs> what do you think it is? I love that expression. I went to get cocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a great fucking drunk expression. Oh yeah, getting cocked. Yeah, that's what I know a guy who was in a rehab and that. 
Um, he told me we were like looking out the window, and he told me, he "Goes, you see all those cars over there? Those are all drug dealers. They're just waiting for some guy to go. I've had it, and they'll come out. No way. And they'll like immediately sell them drugs. And it was like oh, it was evil. it was kind of like the shark circling the shark cage. Like yeah, it was that kind of like they're just out there. Like, and I'm like, wow, that that shouldn't be allowed. You know, like so I'm I'm like evil. an idiot. You know, yeah. oh you shouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah. you know? Isn't hey, that fellas, crazy? Cut it out. Man, yeah. you did your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, celebrate. They're like, yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Day. Uh -huh. You know, like the slither snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to lose a customer. That's uh -uh. the best way to get them back when they're vulnerable. Oh, right, for coming sure. Right out. Well, that, dude, back to that book, Dreamland, it talks about these these Mexicans from Nayara bringing black tar heroin to America mm. and how it exploded was because of their customer service. Right? They, yeah, they would, they had a paging system, they had cell phones, they would give addicts extra. And it'd be like, hey, it's on the house. You're a good customer. And then when they didn't hear from for a while, since they had their numbers, they'd call them. Be like, yeah. how are you? Do you want to meet up? We have some new heroin if you want to try it out. Yeah, man, I do. Yeah. I yeah. do. Like, yeah. You're you got, on a tipping point. You're you at home out, in the yeah. kitchen, you know bored, what? drinking coffee. Sign from God. You yeah. caught him at the right time. You know um, what, Jose? I'll see you in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, it was like Domino's <laughs> or heroin. Way worse. Yeah. Domino's doesn't call you. Are you hungry, Ian? <laughs> Ian, would you like a pizza? Yeah. Fuck, I would it's like a pizza. Cheesy How bread? about one on the house, Ian? Yeah. Oh, you guys are the best. Uh -huh. I'm a yeah. little short on funds right now. Yeah. Don't worry about it, Ian. And they're, they're, Pizza is uh, your friend. Their number one export that they would use all their money, the, the drug dealers, was uh, Levi's 501 jeans. And they would bring it back to their families, and that would show everyone in Nairit, like, wow, we have money now. <laughs> so they would they would raid these places, and the closets would be stacked floor to ceiling with jeans. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. With an iron crease in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only, <laughs> I was always like, man, why do they, why do, they do that? It's yeah. never going to be slacks, it's jeans. <laughs> They're like, no, that's how we like it. Yeah. It was their sign of opulence. <laughs> yeah. A nice pair of jeans. Well, uh -huh. you ever go to like um, Houston? They always have like that Tex Mex cowboy bar, like where you're not really supposed to go in there. It's for other people. And like those guys are dressed up, you know, they got their jeans ironed, they got the big 10 uh -huh. gallon on. You know, it's like a big night out. And I'm always like, man, good for these guys, man. And then, of course, there's some kind of shots fired in the parking lot. Something terrible <laughs> happens. But, you know, you're like, they're cowboys, you know, of course. Legit they're, cowboys. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is, a, you know, unforgiven here. There's some <laughs> issue, you know, some of the, the cows. <laughs> <laughs> something about the, the cattle fight, the grazing rights, or something. <laughs> Those are cool towns, though. The uh, you know, you don't you don't get that much anymore. Everything looks the same. Yeah, you know, all these towns are the same now. There's no late night food. No, nowhere. Well, actually, I think Does this New might York be a city. Still have it? Barely. Nope. Well, we just have pizza. Cats and, is deli still open? Yeah. Yeah, but it's like $35 for <laughs> fucking don't, pastrami. But not all night. But don't, if you want a Vegas. fucking pastrami sandwich at four in the morning, you should be willing to pay $35. I, I'd be willing to pay it, but it's not open. It's like Vegas. We were just in Vegas. Yeah. That has like late night food, and it's pretty good. That What was that place you took? To, uh, uh, where oh, was that? oh, oh, Ping Pang Pong. That's a real place. The Chinese food. <laughs> uh -huh. It's yep. open real late? It's, uh, it's like 24 hours. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you, you think the people who work there are angels because they look exhausted. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in a casino working at a Chinese food restaurant. Like all, it's everything you would think. But then you're like, hey, this food is really good. Yeah. I, I can't believe the it. The best mm. Chinese I've ever had. Really? Yeah, I got their Chopsticks logo tattooed on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. And There's a restaurant inside um, Encore uh, at the Wynn the Win, uh, Hotel. Um, the Wynn has like a Michelin star Chinese restaurant in it. I think it's the only restaurant, the only Chinese restaurant in the country, I think, that has a Michelin wow. star. Or one Whoa. of the only ones. It's uh, incredible. What I'm, is that place called, Jamie? It's incredible. Wing it's Lei. like, what is it called? Wing Lee. Wing Lei. Wing, Wing Lei. Yeah, or Wing Lee. Vegas. L -E? L -E yeah, I mean, they L -E don't help us. I sound really racist when I'm naming my favorite Chinese yeah. restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Chinese Let's go restaurant. To Ping -Ping well, first Chinese restaurant in America to earn a Michelin star. Whoa! But those are normal hours. Like that's five yeah. thirty nine. That's like a yeah. restaurant. It's a real restaurant. You have to dress yeah. nice too. Like you can't wear cool. like a cut whoa off. woke fried Maine lobster. Dude, it that sounds so good. Walk fried, not oh. woke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <It's> like, <laughs> poetry <laughs> slam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we fry it in trans tears. Yeah. We ask its permission. You have yeah. to take a knee. 
Uh, what was going to say? Uh, Ping, pong, pong. Yeah, there, there it is. is. I'm impressed with Vegas. Vegas I mean, Vegas has really turned the corner. You oh, know? Vegas is a different place. And now. it's a total different. You see it too, right? It's, it's like, also Vegas became much more about entertainment than just about for gambling. sure. Mm-hmm. And also, like the the sphere is a good example of like what is possible. Like right. I'm sure that's just the beginning of it. You know? Yeah, with that kind of money, <laughs> we went to the BattleBot Arena there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen, when you're driving yeah. through Vegas and just the neon <laughs> and all the craziness, it's fucking amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And I did shows that Wise Guys was a great club, by the way, in Vegas. The locals came out and they were so happy to see a show. Like usually it's casino or whatever, yeah. bigger only, but just to have like a regular club there is really cool too. And there's there's a bunch, but this is off the strip. It's way off, so mm-hmm. it's mostly for the locals. So it was kind of refreshing to see the locals come out and let's say is there a more jaded crowd than a Vegas crowd? You know, they've Probably seen it all. Not, right? Yeah, so they were really cool. Yeah, they're and great. Uh, I like Vegas. I feel like Vegas has turned the corner, man. It's really it's popping now. Yeah. You know? Well, it's a pe- place where people go to have a good time. Mm-hmm. So when you do shows there, like, you know, doing shows, you ever do the Mirage? I think so in the past, for sure. That's that, uh, what is it, the Terry Fedor Theater? Oh, the, no, the, the Mirage? Think yeah, he's, he's yeah. It was called that. It was called that. I think they changed it, but the fucking place is great. I was there with Gillis like a few months back. It's amazing. You get yeah. in there, and you're like, holy shit, this place is incredible. Yep. I forgot how fun it was. And it's like a bunch of people there to have a good time. It's like that's what you want. You yeah. want people that are just like purposely, I'm here to have a good time. They want fun. I'm, at, I'm in a town that's specifically designed to have a good time. That's the first place I saw the axe throwing stuff. They have like new ideas. Like for oh, some yeah. reason, people will bring new ideas and they'll like Vegas. You know, people want to, you know, what's the next thing that people want to do? What do they want to try? So I think that's a good place. Like if you have an idea and you want to see if people are into it, that's the place to do it. You know? Yeah. So that's where you'll see a lot of these uh, robots and stuff like that. There, they'll have oh. some kind of robot wrestling. Or well, something. it'll be robot prostitutes. They'll they'll, sure. they'll unleash Ooh. them. That'd be the first place they do it in Vegas. And you know I'm the weed school. thing there too, which is weird that their weed laws are you can buy it, but you can't really smoke it on the street or in the hotels or anything like that. So I don't know where people are actually smoking that weed, but that just added another <laughs> layer. <laughs> Gotta go over to someone's house. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. an Airbnb for <laughs> smoke breaks. Just on top of the like stratosphere, you know. You gotta <laughs> yeah. Can't hot do it box up there. in the Battle Box Arena. <laughs> But it, there is the sad of Vegas, and let's face it, there's some like you know you go to old Vegas and you're like walking down those streets. It's sad, but oh, uh, yeah. there's definitely you know, a lot of sad in Vegas. There's some fun to it too, though, well, and it has all those museums, like just crazy museums there. If you're gonna have gambling, you're gonna have failure. If you're gonna <laughs> yeah. have, you have people who just fucking hit the rocks, <clears throat> yeah, at 400 miles an hour, and cool. <laughs> 4 a.m. You can't yeah. quit the penny slots. People lose everything. People, have you ever seen those videos of people just peeing in their seats because they don't feel like getting up? No. Yeah, there's this girl. She's <laughs> sitting there. No, I haven't seen that video. This girl sitting there on her phone, no. and she's sitting at one of the slot machines. She just pisses. <laughs> a girl or yeah, an older girl, woman? A lady. Was she a hot? Young, look, she's just sitting there pissing. She's kind of hot. So she's on the phone. She just says, I'm just going to fucking piss. So she's just pissing. While she's sitting there. But that's, she doesn't look like a degenerate. That's she in just Vegas? looks like drunk. She's probably both. She's too oh, that's hot weird. to be like she's, a degenerate. She's probably drunk Bro, or she's just pissing on the ground in front of everybody. Lucky ground. And people are filming mm. it. <laughs> and she's got like a beautiful purse, nice shoes. That's in Vegas? I, yeah. I, it doesn't really. Wow. <laughs> what casino is that at, Jamie? I don't know. I'm just looking Heaven. at it. Woman no, pees while gambling at a casino. She refuses to go to the bathroom, so she doesn't... Ruin her Take luck. The caption out of it. Is there any chance what that's t- not what it is? Yeah. Wh- yeah. Wh- like, what if it's f- coming from her bag, or she put a drink in between her legs? Mm-hmm. What a weird ad. For she's that. really turned on. <laughs> um, I would like to just keep believing she's I, peeing. It's what it yeah. looks like. Yeah. That makes it better. That's what it looks like. What yeah. a weird. It definitely looks like she's peeing. Yeah. I can't no get over how hot Look, people, she is. Apparently, people do do that, though. I've heard, I've talked to people. I was expecting just, someone oh, in one I've of those seen scooters. In other videos, but this is the one that went around viral. Right. Let's. That's because she's hot. I thought. Yeah. It was, um, <laughs> don't they do that in Times Square at um everywhere with the ball? <laughs> drop, <laughs> the people are peeing and shitting everywhere. Don't people wear diapers because it's so yeah. crowded? You're not allowed drop? to leave once you get in that zone. Yeah. Uh, uh, security zone. They should all die. <laughs> what? what? Sorry. I mean, if you're wearing a diaper to go see something no, and you can't pee, well, you're useless. Mm. Mm. Anyway, uh, right, Dave? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> I'm not wearing a diaper today. We'll change my catheter. Imagine the they gave you that option. They just connected you. Would you like to be connected to the urinal? You're yeah. Like, yeah, sure. Just connect me. And they just strap you in, put you in a chair, and you just zip your dong, just let it hang out. And you can pee at any time. You're in a bag. You're in a, like a blue, dark bag. 
I hate yeah, the, as long as I, I didn't have to machines. sit in it. Yeah, I do that. Those machines suck. I, I'd rather like play blackjack. I was playing them with you and the yeah. thing. These dumb machines. It's like by the time you figure it out, you're already about a hundred bucks into these dumb games. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, look at all this like information, and it's like you never know if you're winning or not. You know, yeah. it's like why am I hitting my, you know, like an idiot? You're hitting the butt, waiting for a ding, treat ding, to ding, come ding, out. Ding, 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 but I like the classic, and you know, it's just uh, I was winning. I don't know how people do it. And then every time he came around me, I started losing. Yeah, it was a dark cloud. <laughs> Yeah. Slot revenue made up 66.3% of total gaming win. Wow. Penny slots generated 9.6% of total slot win mm-hmm. with 3.15 billion, which is pennies. That's crazy. Which That's is down Amer- 12% from 2022, while slots that accept multiple denominations generated 5.9 billion, up 16.7% from last year. So people are getting dumber. People always have <laughs> money to gamble. Oh, They're yeah. getting dumber. They're blowing more money on slot machines. Ah, I'm, I'm a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a big what's big your, slot machine. What's your guy? biggest win on a slot? What's your biggest uh, win? Eleven hundred dollars. And how many? How long did it take you to get that? I uh, I was there for like an hour. Oh, if that's not a, bad. If you had a guess though, like how much are you in the hole to slot machines all time? <laughs> Oh, Joe. <laughs> so much. <laughs> well, I mean, I lost like three grand when I was in Vegas. On I was slot there. machines. Tw- well, I play a little roulette, too. But yeah. was, I like how that's your backup game. Roulette. I understand well, this I, game. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> like another <laughs> guessing. I'm guessing. Last night on stage, I lost $20 betting someone on rock, paper, scissors in the front row. <laughs> I uh, love gambling. I'm not good at it. <laughs> Are you a sports guy, too? No, I don't like sports. Sports, because we really can make it. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't understand the over-unders and the parlays. Mm. and so yeah, but a, we, a we've a been to the track guy. on the yeah. road, and that's fun. Yeah. And that's another one where it takes forever to figure it out, the trifectas and yeah. the quintellas and mm-hmm. all those oh, yeah. all those other... Fr- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those we, track junkies are weird folk. Oh, yeah. My uncle was one of them. He let me uh, got me to pull the trigger on the start of a race once. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a fun date, though. Like, if you take a girl, it's like, like, hey, this is kind of cool, like we're the upper class. But it's like you're surrounded by some of the saddest people who've ever lived. You know, the people who live at the track. <laughs> the saddest people. shit is off-track betting. That's the Oh, saddest. that was so much oh, fun. Oh, yeah. OTB. <laughs> yeah. OTB. Oh, my God. In, in New York, they had off-track betting. Oh, the, Chinatown the, is everywhere. Gambling junkies would go and yeah. bet on the races from the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. That was the most unhealthiest place. Like, you would walk in, it was like waves of smoke. And yeah. just, oh, man, it was just terrible going in there i I remember people like with uh i was like do you have a bathroom here i'm like what are you talking about (laughs) (laughs) there's no bathroom here (laughs) people would be living in it yeah come on they'd be taking showers in there (laughs) yeah off track betting was this guy white plains charlie that i used to hang around with and uh white plains in uh executive billiards in white plains and he would always go to off track betting during the day and he'd come back complaining what is off track betting this is before the internet where you'd put it in and you'd be able to bet on races around the country, you know? Oh. So you're betting on horse races, yeah. but you're nowhere near the horse race. Oh. So the, and all these fucking psychotic gamblers. These guys are nuts. <laughs> Look at these people. They're all just completely addicted. They're all shady. Everyone's in there. Everyone's fucked their whole life up with this addiction. Yeah, that was my uncle, man. And they're just donating money. You know, I remember... Um, it looks like the DMV. I, I was going to say, like, I remember walking past, I was like, is this like the cab authority? Is this like where the cabbies hang out? Look how sad these guys look. Oh, like, yeah. give me a cl- click on some of the folks hanging out there. They're great. They just look like everything's gone wrong. Everything. Look at that guy explaining. I'll fucking tell you what the government's plan is. <laughs> Yeah, they're all just junkies. It's the name of one of the horses, government's plan. It was a nice way to spend an afternoon. Mm-hmm. That's how they portrayed it on the commercial. Just a bunch of junkies. <laughs> oh, God, Ghost of Wagers Pass, <laughs> still living. Yeah, they close all the, this is all down. They don't have off-track betting anymore? I don't think so. I think when they did they make that illegal? Near the Manhattan Bridge. Do you think? I think and so. OTB, Lifelong maybe. Upper, Upper West there. Side Cider makes documentary about off-track betting. Oh, look, that looks classy, though, with the... That's a nice spot. The, yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. That's the Upper West Side. They're mm. betting on something besides horses there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's like... <laughs> That's like falconry or something. Something, <laughs> something. Another level of animal. <laughs> well, there's always dog races too. Right? Yeah, like I, I've been to yeah. those in person, and they yeah. were a lot of fun. Really? You know, in um, they used to have the thing where they uh, this was like a rite of passage or at a state fair where they had monkeys riding dogs, and they were like, "This has got to end now." And I'm like, "Oh, come on, it's hilarious." <laughs> You know, and, they'd, and the monkeys would be like riding them around. They'd have like them do a circle. Man, that was really fun. 
I, I saw think everybody had a good time. The dog, the monkey, everybody's having a good time in that I one. saw a video today of India, and these folks are walking down this road, and this monkey runs up behind and just drop kicks this lady, and then Yeah, run. see? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> monkey riding It's a good dogs. heat. I got the guy in red. I got the guy in red. So Purple's crazy. making a comeback. <laughs> hey, stop. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, see? my Whoa. friend? Whoa. We should have bet. Oh, this is like such a lame see? one. But look at the dog. He's easily distracted. <laughs> You're taking a bow. <laughs> Do any of the monkeys rip the dog's faces off? That's great. No, they know better than that. Dogs will bite their fucking Are they head friends? Off. Like, do they, they get along? They have to be buddies. If the dogs don't seem to mind. They yeah. have to split the purse. <laughs> the dogs probably, for the dogs, probably like being pet. Like, yeah, he's Aww. petting me. He's riding me. He's wearing a little dress. <laughs> and they don't weigh much. Oh, that's so fun. So these people were walking down this road in India, and this monkey runs up behind him, drop kicks this one lady, and then runs a little further and drop kicks this little kid, and then just runs <laughs> off. Like 100% did it on purpose. That's just great. To, like, fuck these people. That's great. He's a migrant. What an angry. Runs what an angry. Up, runs up with its back feet. Like, in like a drop kick, yeah, right? like a real like pro wrestling. Did drop you try kick. to steal their purse or was nope, it love just of the fucked game? Them up, just the wow. love of the game. That's Just awesome. Just drop some bombs on these fucking fools. That's the best. <laughs> oh, nice one. Oh, bro. You've been served. It's like, <laughs> this boom. monkey just decided to fuck this dude up. Well, he's egging him on, though. He's like, fuck Did you. he give him the finger? Oh, he tried oh to, my God. He tried to stand his ground, but yeah, the monkey's like. Yeah, he tried to like, say, fuck <laughs> you, the monkey. He what a that guy was! A, I hate to say it, he was. He ass, left ass, his ass, thing behind. Yeah, he's so disoriented. So yeah. th where's the monkey? Is this outdoors or is it indoors? The one that I saw, it was indoor or outdoors rather. This oh, that is those little guys. Road. That's oh, yeah, a they'll, scary they'll attack. They'll steal your fucking kids, man. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, look at those tails, man. Oh, they're dragging the girl. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's sketchy. I would not let the monkey grab my fucking kid. No. It's amazing. Then you got to realize, like, they'll fuck you up. Like, a little monkey will fuck you up. It's like that. They can't treat it like it's a little person. Mm -mm. They must think we're so stupid. Like, they just <laughs> we keep feeding them and, like, yeah. I mean, honestly. Well, then a lot of places they'll take your phone. Yes. In order to give the phone back, you have to give them something. Mm. That's smart. That's why so you have rock... to give them food. Yep. Can you train the monkey to steal this. a phone <laughs> and give it to you so I'm you can sure you sell can. it? I'm sure you can. And that's in like a, where where is it where like they they live in like a, a monastery or, an, or a ruin or something like that they kind of control the town I think it's in India or Thailand or something like that where it's like just troops of monkeys hundreds of them <laughs> stop traffic counts. and yeah. they can't do anything yeah wow. yep. yeah you can't fight them unless you're willing to go to war <laughs> you got to really be willing to go to war you got what's your weapon you got any machine guns. Yeah, how would you yeah. fight the monkey mm. army? Yeah, That's they're going to swarm on you. You're going to be able to, you got to be able to, f maybe even, yeah, you need something that we you got think multiple like a mace? rounds. No, Just smack no, them they'll all. take that mace around away from you and stuff it up your ass. Mm. They'll but you jump on your face and bite your nose off, and then you drop the mace, and then they beat you to death mm. with the mace. Like, you're fucked. You, <laughs> you got to have a motorcycle helmet on, Kevlar suit. There it is. Yeah. You got to look like Tex Cobb in Raising Arizona. Exactly. No, that, but he, he was still vulnerable. Yeah. His skin was exposed. You want to literally be wearing like a motorcycle riding outfit made out of Kevlar. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Look at them. Yeah. That's like two troops of monkeys going at it. Yeah, they're fighting. Look at that. Well, this was, I think, during COVID. One yep. of the things that happened during COVID was they didn't have access to all the tourists. So yep. they were starving. Yep. So they had to become dependent upon people and where people would hang out and leave food. Oh, and, my you're God. Right. Yeah. Look at those guys. They're probably fucking starving. Look, that's a nice spread, though, that they put out for them. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's good. Sort of like... <laughs> One guy was dressed as a monkey. <laughs> I'm infiltrating. A nice little buffet. Look at this. Sort of... Sort of cool. Like, like a car all different plates of food. Like a carnival cruise. Yeah, it's they're nice. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're at the buffet. Like all you can eat. <laughs> look at them. They're fucking having a good old time. You would think that they with look all really this healthy. nice treatment, they wouldn't steal any babies, but they still <laughs> will. Masks on, too. Did you see that? What's that? These guys are wearing a giant mask. They're so smart. Oh, boy. He's their leader. I think that might be a statue. Is that a statue or a dude? That's a statue. Oh, yeah, that's like the god. It, yeah. They're worshipped. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Oh, that looks like rats, wild. like the way I they're know. circling. Isn't it like wild that? what people oh. choose? Oh. Oh. It's so wild what people choose to and choose not to worship. You know, look, he's shaking it off. It's oh, like, yeah. enough of the table, boys. Boy, what a oh. fucking horrible life that is. Wow. Oof. Imagine being a monkey in India. And the, no tourists show up, and you're like, you got to be kidding. Mm, Where's yeah. the food, man? If they only had dogs to ride, then they could make a living. <laughs> then they could really make a difference. Do you know the story of uh, uh, Cobra Charmers? No. no. Cobra Charmers started because 
they they started offering people money to kill cobras. And so what people realize is you could breed cobras and then kill those cobras. And so every cobra you capture and kill, they give you a little bit of money. So they started breeding cobras. And so then the government got wise to it and say, hey, stop. You can't do this. No more bounty on cobras. And they're like, what are we going to do with these fucking cobras? And so they started fucking doing shows with them. No shit. Wow. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. See if that's true. <laughs> oh, did you just tell us? Did no, you I didn't make, this make it up? up? No. Oh. Imagine if I made it up. Yeah. But I don't I remember it. the source, which is often the case. I don't remember the source of that story. You mean we can't sure. make these cobras fuck anymore? Yeah, they fucking. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. People are. Just get a little. People find ways. Where are they? Way, where are yeah. they native to? That's India. Like, where, where are the cobras? I like, believe it's India. India, right? Yeah. I mean, you think about the people going back and forth from Mexico and making eight thousand dollars a month. Like, yeah. same kind of deal. People find a little loophole. Like, ah, oh, I got an idea. Breed cobras, bro. I'm co breeding cobras. Making the criminals. That's another tough one. How many cobra guys bite? died breeding cobras? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking through the thing, but that's a pretty sneaky thing I never heard. For safety, some North American sh snake charmers stitch close the mouth of the performing snakes, oh. leaving just enough opening for the animal to be able to move its tongue in and out. Members of the audience in that region believe the snake's ability to deliver venomous bites comes from its tongue <laughs> rather than its fangs. <laughs> snakes Weird. subjected to this practice soon die of starvation mm. or mouth infection uh, must be replaced by oh freshly God. caught specimens. Similar methods are used in India where snakes are defanged and have their venom glands incapacitated. They are also kept in boxes or bags for 30 to 45 days and dehydrated so their muscles cramp, making them sluggish. So they will drink the milk offered by the devotees at festivals. The milk is undigestible to the snake. Jesus Christ. Wow. It's abuse. Methods abuse. of dealing with the fangs include expert surgical removal of both of the fangs and replacement fangs, <laughs> which has been done by some Native American and African snake charmers. Barring <laughs> extraordinary measures, pulled fangs are replaced within days. Fangs may also be plugged with wax or other material. God. Well, it's so it's like a three chord Monty kind of like you're thinking it's the guy could really die, nothing could happen to him. Right, mm. but I th see if that's the origin of us uh, that they used to Google that. Like if they used to uh, give bounties for cobras, but people took advantage of it. Pretty sure that's a real story. Uh, this has the history it goes all the way back to ancient Egypt. Right, a viper. In but in real? India, what I'm talking about is the bounty on cobra thing. The real money is uh, in being a snake dentist with all those fang <laughs> removals. Yeah, how mean, do you not, do I'm that? not saying that they invented yeah. it, but I'm saying like that's why where it came from. Like where there were so many of them, and it was associated with India. That these are people that Man. apparently had a bunch of snakes laying around. Like, look, we need to figure out a way to fucking diversify. Wasn't that St. Patrick? Didn't he? Didn't he chase all the snakes, snakes. out of Ireland? <laughs> Wasn't he the guy? <laughs> But what are you supposed to do? It's like Imagine one of those a snake living in Ireland. It's so cold, it's yeah. wet all the time. Yeah. It's probably easy to chase them out of there. Bring me back to India and take my teeth out. <laughs> what happens with the Here's, like? What are you supposed to tip that guy? Like, I don't know. It's like a street true. performance. This is an longer article. The first paragraph says: Legend so. goes that a cobra infestation plagued Delhi in the 1800s. So the British Raj decided to offer a cash reward for every dead cobra. The menace briefly You're subsided right. until yeah. the plan backfired. Savvy Indians built cobra farms. So they could have a constant supply of snakes to kill and redeem for money. Yeah. Wow. You're there right. British Whoa. eventually uncovered the scheme and ended its incentive. With no use for the now worthless snakes, breeders released the creatures onto Delhi streets. Wow. You were right, man. Yeah. So it made the problem worse. That's right. That's what it was. Oh, wow. I, I fucked up the story. No, you got, it, you it got a lot the, of it, right? Yeah, you the nailed problem it. worse. Oh, shit. Man. Yeah, people are gross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they like fuck these cobras. Yeah. They just let them loose. <laughs> you do, you don't see that on New York streets anymore, like with the, like performing dogs or any any of that kind of stuff. You don't see any kind of animal. That's illegal, but you can yeah. just go shit in the curb. And that's yeah, okay. well, that's that's yeah, fine. That's a, yeah, that's a performance. You will see somebody who's like, you know, I'm a squatter with a dog, and the poor dogs there all day long. You know, just like laying next to them. Is that, that that I always feel like? Are it's, those it's, dogs it's, drugged, or are they so socialized that they're just docile? I think they're. Probably that's so what they're used to living like that. So. You think? Yeah, they're just used to that existence. But yeah, you're really giving money to the dog, hoping that he'll take 
the right. money and well, take yeah. care of the dog, but really, a we don't know what he's doing. A homeless guy without a dog is probably like 60% less effective mm. than what? a homeless guy with a dog. You That's don't my know. rough estimation. Yeah. You remember Norm right? McDonald's joke about the homeless more. guy with the dog? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, what is the dog thinking? This is the longest walk ever. Are we ever going home? <laughs> Man, it's been going on for days now. <laughs> That's the fucked up thing about dogs. They're so awesome. They'll love you even yeah, if you're just homeless love, and yeah. just fucking lazy as shit. Shit and yep. never getting anything done. They still, I like, still love you. Yeah. Mm. It's real unconditional love. It's oh. beautiful. My cat does that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Your cat will eat you when you die. Cats have within yeah. seconds. Good. Good. Within seconds. I'll be one with him finally. <laughs> <laughs> be inside of him. Yeah. All right, kids, let's wrap this bitch up and bring it home. Uh, Ian, very fun. Thank this you for being a here. Bless. Thank My you. My pleasure, man. brother. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to see you guys this weekend. So, thank you, Dave, buddy. you're the fucking man. I love you to death. You're one of thank the best you. of all time. Joe, thank you for all of us for doing what you do, man. Honestly, it was a great hang. And the club, I can't wait to be there. So We're excited. Okay, that's it. Bye. Thank you. Oh, your yeah. special, when is it coming out? Uh, March 26th, Netflix, uh, Hot Cross Buns. Woo! Yes. All right. Bye, everybody.